good intro. <laughs> Thank you. Are those the Swiss tracks? Yes, they are. Well, race deck, not Swiss tracks, but very similar. What's up, dudes? I think. Oh, wait. I should, I should use these ones. What? <laughs> All right. Stop, stop the music. Muted mic, not muted. Not muted now. Let me make sure I don't have double microphones. I have a magic trick. You guys want to see? Guys, where is it? It's right here. It's right here. Okay. You guys want to see my magic trick? We've, we've upped our game a little bit. This is an anticipation of another camera that is on its way, which I hope is good. I don't know. It's not, it's not just a regular camera. But in doing so, you need a good way to switch in between those cameras. So I have a magic trick for those of you that are early. Watch. Watch this. So this is my GoPro. Ignore the wire. That doesn't matter. This is just for visual purposes. So we got that one over there that you guys just saw. So if I say webcam. Dang it. Webcam. Webcam. Ah, I did it. GoPro. GoPro. What? <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Oh, that's so fun. You guys don't know how many. Did it not work? It should have worked. Now I can hear, now I can't, now I can, now I can. <laughs> I, I hope it worked. Did the audio cut out for any of that? You guys don't know how long I've been looking into like small, small remotes. And you might think that's an easy thing, right? Like how hard can it be? It's 2020, almost 2021. How hard can it be to, to, to just have a simple little button remote that you like keep here, you keep somewhere near you, and then you just push a button to change scenes. Well, it didn't cut out, but it sounded like you were far away. Okay, so this mic, this mic is for this camera, so that's why it would have sounded far away. Okay, good, good, 
all the things, all the things are working then. Because this is actually an extra microphone. So what we're going to be doing is using that. Oh, what is this? What is this spam? Where's my Twitch? Where's my Twitch? Is it freaks me out because, like, I, I go through all the motions. Hang on. It freaks me out because, like, Shut up. I, I go Shut through up, me. all the motions. No, go away, Twitch. Sorry, all my Twitch peeps are great, but I'm getting spam right now. How do I... How do I... Uh, uh, block. Block. Okay, so that should have done that. All right, anyways, sorry. Somebody on Twitch posted a link. It was annoying. It wasn't, it wasn't tint related. So anyways, yes, voice activated scene switching. That's what we had to do. You would think that you could just take a little video game remote or something. They have a bunch of them, little Bluetooth remotes. Just put them here. The problem is if you don't press a button within 10, 10 to 15 minutes, they, they shut off. And then you have to turn it back on, wait for them to connect, and then change your scene. But then also, my hands are busy. I'm not an average streamer, so I'm really geeked about this one. So, webcam, webcam. Oh, what is that? GoPro. <laughs> Good stuff. That's my car, love to see it. Oh, join us on YouTube if you want to see everybody else chatting too. I stream to a couple places, tint stuff on YouTube. So yeah, that's like, got that working this morning and crossing my fingers that it didn't ruin anything else too. So it's, so, so those, those, those little things, those little things where I could just be walking around and then, you know, I might have to say it twice, but it's, it's better than running back to the computer and trying to switch it. So how y'all doing? I'm, uh, I'm doing good. I had, I had this, this coffee and as I was walking up to go live today, I spilled it and then I washed it out and then dried it. And then I spilled coffee again. God damn it. You sound, you sound loud and proud. Works like a charm. <laughs> like a tech nerd charm. Yes, 100%. Does 80% block heat? Yes, in ceramic. If you're going with lighter films or just more heat rejection, go with a ceramic film. But make sure it's a good one. I saw a post in the group where somebody said $85 for a windshield in ceramic. And I don't know what, what some people are doing. But then you get, you get people that are like, hey, I got quoted 85. I was seeing what you would do. It's like just trying to just bid that lower and lower to what end? So inevitably it's free, but a guy that doesn't know how to price his own work is due for problems, maybe. All right, so we got some, some work ahead of us today. We have a full Subaru. We got this, this beautiful car here. Uh, this is an STI. Um, we are going to be doing all the doors, the back window, of course, and the full windshield. So we're going to be doing 20, 20 on everything and 50 on the windshield. So not everything, everything in 20, but 20 and 50. So I guess we got to get started. The one thing I'm really not looking forward to is these front quarters. Some of you guys know they're not exactly fun, so they may take us a time or two to get right, but we will make sure they are right. They got the rubber gasket seals, and they do the same thing on the front and the back. They're a little bit more challenging on the front. Um, you can loosen up the seal a little bit with like plastic tools and a heat gun, just kind of warm it up, pry it back just a little bit. Um, when it's cold, it'll be a little bit more difficult, so. All right, 
So since we have to get started, let's get started. Also, I was having phone problems. I got a new phone and it was fine. And then on my way in today, it's not connecting to my, my cell network. It's just like, there's no SD card. And I'm like, mm, or not SD card, uh, SIM card. And I'm like, there definitely is. So I tried pulling it out, putting it back in, put it in my old phone. Old phone's fine. Put it in this one. Nope. Just nope. And it's like, okay, all right. I, I, guess, I guess that's a thing. It's another thing that I have to try and handle today because I need it. I definitely need it. All right, so we're going to pop this up. We added a new addition to our head mount. This inevitably will get even more, I'm sure, because that's what we do here. We put lots of Wi-Fi technology signals very close to our brain because that's healthy, right? That's healthy for you. Wow, having my 50th anniversary limited edition challenger ceramic coated, then hoping to send it your way in a couple of weeks to have it tended during a live stream, if you could. Well, goddamn. Yes, yes, I definitely could. Oh, that's, uh, that's also terrifying, too. <laughs> a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. No, I can do it, 100%. Challengers aren't too difficult to tint, but I want to do it justice. That sounds, sounds like, a, like a hell of a job. For sure. Did you get the Note 20? I did, and I really like it. It's bigger than I wanted, but I really like it. And it's just not connecting to Verizon. Good stuff. All right, let's see. Let's see if this is gonna work. I'm gonna step away. I'm getting, getting farther away. Uh, GoPro. Uh, GoPro. What? Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> it's the little things. Webcam. Did it work? Oh, you guys see? You guys see? GoPro. Damn it. GoPro. Ha! All right. It's not going to be flawless, but it is better than nothing. <laughs> That's fun. Sorry, I'm getting really distracted with my uh, little technological, technological advancements. Awesome shopping camera setup. Thank you. Um, was it? How did I switch back to the main camera? GoPro. GoPro. What? Uh oh. Well, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> what happened? What, how, one, how did it switch? And two, GoPro. 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 Um... It'll pick up, it's, I mean, it could. It definitely could pick up similar sounds because it's his voice, so. You know, we're putting, there it goes.
Got to set up so it won't automatically change scenes. It actually is not automatic. It's 100% like it's voice to key inputs. There's no timers or anything. So, uh-oh. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to have to see. I don't, the, the weird part to me is how did it actually freeze? It's never done that before. So, I wonder if it's this close to this. <laughs> As weird as that would be. Uh, can you set up a microphone to recognize your voice? Like, can you use GoPro microphone? It's got to be a separate microphone because the way that the GoPro connects to the computer is through RTMP. And you'd have to, like, try and pick that up in a different way. So it basically goes straight into OBS. There's a third-party software that's running on the computer that picks up the voice that inputs them as basically keyboard commands. So when I say GoPro, in no, non-string, GoPro, it's broken. <laughs> GoPro, GoPro. Um, 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 um. Sorry, I know that it's black. We're we're losing things. <laughs> oh, it was looking so promising. It was looking so promising. I wonder why. Oh wait, it just came back. Okay, we're back. Get rid of ASWF. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't fuck with ASWF. There's one there's one hard no company for me, and that's them. I had a very bad experience and seen other really bad experiences. With that many signals next to your brain, you're basically a robot. We're trying. Okay. <laughs> we may, we first will try to come up with a different word. I mean, we could do things like camera one, camera two, stuff that is less sounding like other words. And two, we might have to just nuke the whole system. If it, if it just messes up too much. But there's this, you guys think I'm a crazy streamer. There's another, there's a far crazier streamer than me. I mean, definitely crazier, but as far as technology goes, this dude has me so far beat. He's, he's how I found some of the stuff too, so. Sushi Dragon over on Twitch. He's a he's a monster. <laughs> Shish kebab. <laughs> uh, I like shish kebab. It'll tell me what it picked up too. So it's got to like pick up a lot of non conversation like non trigger words. And then it's got to pick up the trigger word so that you kind of have to like pause for a minute and separate yourself. It's not using, it's not using like Google. It's using Microsoft's integrated voice recognition. So however good that ends up to be, from what I could tell, it's not that great. But when I put in the keywords, it seemed to like try to force to identify those words. So... It's not surprising that it would pick up something that sounds similar. Let's try it again. Let's try it again. Webcam. Oh! Oh, that's cool! GoPro. All right. That's, that's pretty cool, dude. That's pretty cool. That's what we aim for. But now... <laughs> <clears throat> 
now I have it in my mind that at any point in time everything's going to not work. So now I'm scared. So I'm like checking over my shoulder. But you guys, you guys will tell me. You guys will tell me if, uh, if something breaks. But the microphone should sound better too because we've had to use the, the heater and I just saw my LED light flashing over. Oh, good, that's fun. That's fun. So I have to use the heater and it runs quite a lot now and the GoPro, I'm on it, okay. All right, that's a trigger word. We're gonna change that. <laughs> the, the audio on it is good, but not that good. And we're using now my dedicated uh, small road mic that I like a lot. And that seems to be working much better in a close range. So we're gonna stick with that. And that also allows me to use it on multiple sources more easily anyways. I want to, I honestly just want to stream figuring out tech problems <laughs> or playing around with them. That seems more fun to me. But you know, we we got to pay the bills, so we'll do it around around what we do, I guess best. Love the channel, love the content, keep it up. Thank you. We're doing our best here. You guys can't ever say I didn't try. We try a whole bunch. What knife? This is a, who is this? This is an NT cartridge A. I have mixed feelings about the knife. It lets you slot in five blades, but it's got like a really round plastic edge to it. So that can be a little bit tougher for like getting your edge right. Depending on the type of glass that you're cutting on. So ones with like more rounded top edges are a little bit harder to get that like nice clean cut with it. So there's just a little bit more wiggle, a little bit more play. No more steamer? No, not today, thank God. Oh, we're doing, we're doing pretty good. You know, I wonder if when I said change back, there's just a problem sometimes with it changing back to Um, why that one for the top edge? The, I like what's in it. So 30 degree uh, carbon blades. These are like the silver, these are really sharper. Carbon steel's harder uh, than stainless, so it keeps its edge better. I really wish there was a 30 degree stainless, but they don't make them. Believe it or not, like you guys want to make some money, go go get me some 30 degree stainless steel ones. Go get NT to make them. It hasn't, hasn't been done yet. 
I searched. I did a lot of searching. There's people that claim that they can do them, but it's kind of like a big... It's like a big ask. Is there anything you do for drying windshields? No, nothing extra, nothing special. Everything's dry within a within a handful of days, especially when it gets like super cold. It, it really doesn't take all that long for it to dry. So I've never needed to add like alcohol or any type of like drying agent. Like the, um, to give you guys a little bit of gauge, like it's, it's what, like, it's been like 20s to 40s, and we did a full car with a windshield. Oh, you know what? I, somebody said they found them on 44. There's one. There's, there, there is one, but they're like dumb expensive. They're like, they were priced at a dollar per blade. And being stainless steel, that's too soft. You're gonna go through them too fast. It was by, uh, by some like wrap company, Pro Design or something like that. Pro Series, I believe was the name. They were like, they used to paint them red. They're pricey, but extremely worth it. It wouldn't be for tinting though. You're like a dollar a blade. It's just, uh, I don't know, man. Have you had somebody complain about getting water on the car doors? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't think it's ever actually been a, an issue. I have heard it. Um, like very, very rare. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, so like props, like that's, that's one small advantage to plotters is um, the way that we handled them The, what was it? I'm losing my, losing my train of thought here. Shoot, what was it talking about? I forget. Oh, I know we were talking about blades, and then I was listening to a comment about blades, and then I just got way distracted. Why does, <clears throat> it'll do that for me too. Why does the film crease, like when you put your finger to it? It kind of does that. It'll start to drag water on cars. Oh, thank you. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Yeah, I. there was one instance where I heard of a guy, like basically, he's like, oh, I got my truck painted recently. And this was like an older truck that he got painted. And tinted, pulled outside, like it was like tended for like, like this company was like 200 bucks. And then he wanted like a full paint job again. And I don't know exactly what they worked out, but it's like, man, that's just a little obscene. It's not like when you, when you tinting, the soaps that we use are very mild. So I don't like leaving streaks down the car. Um, but the other thing is, if you want to professionally wash a car, it's a lot more than just, let's spray it down, take a mitt, and wipe it all over the paint. That'll end up doing more damage. So I like to like just not touch it, because you also have stuff like, you know, there were bird droppings on here. There's like little things here and there. So it's just, you talk to a detailer. You can pretty much wipe anything over the paint and then cause, cause issues, so. That's why we put the scraps on the sunroof. All right, so we're gonna do the doors. 
And then we're gonna handle the quarters, and then we're gonna do the back glass, and then the windshield. These here are not super fun. So you have this, like, this curve right here, sharp angles. When you open this up, you have a little bit of a gasket that you can, you can kind of tuck the film into here, and that helps. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just kind of pry this back a little bit, loosen it up. It, it like tightens back up, so it's just loosening it up for like a period of time. And then here we gotta try and loosen up a little bit more because what you want it to do is just slide in and then just not bunch around. These top corners are not fun. That's, that's where you can have the biggest problem. Everything will lay down and then you'll have like a little, a little like finger up there where it presses against the top. So hopefully that won't be the case this time around. We may have to do these a couple of times. So bear with me on those. I still don't have like a surefire way of always getting them perfect. It's kind of like, how? How do you do this? There we go. You do the best you can. I always get a Subaru like once every other month. I really don't get them that often. They're not hard. They're not hard cars to tint. But just those quarters are like the biggest annoyance. Generally speaking, they're not hard. Just flatten out that little bottom. All right, which side are we? Which side? Should we risk it? Should we try it again? Watch this. Webcam. Oh! How interesting is that? GoPro. What? <laughs> Why are you putting the tints outside? To give them some breathing room. It's stuffy in there. They need to breathe. Dang. Does it last longer that way? <laughs> they look better that way. Ooh, good stickage. Good stickage to these panels. We gotta go a little farther on that one. But good stickage. I have successfully coated my thumbs. What's the tint called when it's transparent? Nobody can see. Nobody can see in, but you can see out. Uh, that's like a, that's like a particular mirrored film. It's not super common. Window tint just kind of has that effect on cars already, just because the cabin is not l bright. The, your light source is from the outside. But there is like, oh, one way. There's like, one way. Why not a cordless heat gun? We went over this. This is a cordless heat gun. <laughs> this thing sucks. And actual cordless heat guns, um, they don't put out enough uh, heat. There's not, there's not enough power being generated. You have a, a battery that's supposed to run the fans and generate the heat, and you're pulling, like, out of the wall, heat guns are like 1,000 plus watts, so you just gotta pull too much current. So while they do work, they're real underpowered and slow and just not worth it. So get a torch, 
Get a torch or get a, a corded heat gun. There was an interesting battery supply I saw the other day that's rated up to 1,000 watts. It's about the size of a, of a large car battery, though. So you'd have to, like, put that in the corner, kind of like a spray tank. And then you could hook up your heat gun to it and probably get away with it. And it probably would run for, for a decent amount of time. This glass is a little, little on the, the green side. It's interesting. It's a little darker too. I slept through all my classes. <laughs> well, not this one. Walmart tent? Walmart tent is, uh, is funny. It's, it's fine for what you want to do with it, but you're not going to take yourself seriously with it. Walmart tent's just to like, hey, I want to tent my front doors. That's, that's what it's there for. The Milwaukee heat gun? Yeah, so there's a few versions of it. The old school version of it is way better. And then they, uh, then they outsourced their heat guns to China. <laughs> and then they got worse. So they like, came out with like a newer model. So like, there's like this uh, Makita, this old Makita heat gun that there's a lot of guys that really like them. Um, I never saw it in person, but I actually found some videos uh, where they broke it down, and, and the parts in it are Steinel. So Steinel is a brand that still exists, and they're a dedicated heat gun manufacturer. So you might want to look into them. I looked into T Tint Depot, and I'm going to go with that. Thanks for the help. Oh, you're welcome. No matter what type of film that you're going to use in the beginning, it's all going to be difficult for you. But if you start out with a dyed film, just in the beginning at least, like, practice with a dyed film. It's, good, it's just, it's easier to shrink. That's, that's going to be like the main one. Where do you buy film? Uh, I carry Geo. So they ship it to me out of their magical warehouse down south. So if you're in the south, you guys will get faster shipping. If you're in the north, usually about three days to get here. So if they ship it on like a Tuesday, it gets here on like a Friday. That, that is like my only annoyance. But that's, uh, that's FedEx and location. They get it out same day. So when you order, they're like lickety split. So it just depends on how fast the shipper can get it here. And that's typically been three days. Because it's, it's tough. Like you have to be on top of your ordering when you're three days out. And there's a lot of tenors that aren't. <laughs> I know when I, uh, when I was t in charge of ordering for, like, my dad's shop, you always get to that, like, what day is it? It's Thursday. And then you're like, oh, shoot, we're coming into Saturday. And Saturday is, like, the like, go day. It's, it's, it's D-Day for window tinning. Busy, busy. So, <laughs> I got the notification. Oh, good. Did you put the bell on this time? Did that work? <laughs> what the fuck? What's your excuse? What do you tell? What do you tell a cop when you get pulled over for five? What's your excuse? Um. All right, the only, 
I'm sure there's better, but like I'm always in a panic when I'm trying to think of an excuse. The best thing that worked out for me was like, all right, I had, I had darker windows, which was like 15, 15 and five, I think. And then I had headlights, headlights and taillights. So the headlights weren't fully tinted. It was just the top portion of them. And then uh, the taillights were definitely darker. So it was a silver car, dark accents. It was my cool high school car, cool to me. Um, I said I just bought it and it came like this and I had no idea. And then he's, <laughs> I was like, why did you pull me over? And then he was like, <laughs> he was like, uh, for all of this. And I was like, oh, I, I had no idea. I just bought the car. And then he let me go. And he just said I had to take care of it. I was like, oh my god, that worked? That was... That was when... That was when I was pretty new into my tinting career. Is it necessary to use a heat gun? No, I just do it for fun. Everything that you see me doing is just extra steps for fun. The fuck is this? Yes, yes, it's necessary. Everything that you see me doing is 100% necessary. Okay, maybe not 100%, but like every major thing. Come on now. Come on now. It's just funny how often that type of question comes up because it's like, it's usually from people that don't have a heat gun. And it's like, that's, it's 20 bucks from literally the same place that you bought your tint. Just, just go, go get that too. You can try, the other thing you can try is pulling the panels completely off and then trying to tint it without shrinking. You're gonna have a, you're gonna have a fun time. What about a torch? Heat source. You need a significant heat source. Makes things hot. Melts. Glass is curved. Film is flat. Try pulling the sweep on these, it's super easy. Use a campfire, oh, there was this one dude, he took a, he took like a spray, and like an alcohol spray, and then lit it on fire and like sweeped it off. It worked, so you might meme with the campfire. It's possible. Is it realistic? No, but it's possible. What is that? I called and texted but didn't hear back. I want to get ceramic done on the Impala, but I need this strip first. I'll... If you want to text the studio number so I, I can be sure to get it, I just changed phones and what I didn't realize is that I was actually missing uh, some calls and now my phone is literally not connecting to my own network. So if you, if like Wi-Fi calls work and all that, but just text me because right now it'd be a bad time to try and set that up. Or text us on Facebook. Message us on the Facebook page. I got, I got somebody that can help set that up. Oh yeah, we need this. I definitely want to do ceramic. I actually, I just want to tin it. I'm cool with anything. Just bring it. They'll do it. 
Where are you out of? Uh. What? Oh, come on. Come on, man. Uh. Um, sorry, I, I'm out of uh, Sterling Heights in between 17 and 18 mile off a of mound. Um, my headset just was like, it disconnected. And I was like, oh shoot. So I had to run back over here. And then it's just, it didn't actually disconnect. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. This is the messing. Me <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Go pro. Go pro. <laughs> I got too many things, man. All right. Who wants to count connections with me? Who wants to count brainwave connections? So what do we have? We have a Bluetooth headset. We have a Wi-Fi um, camera on our head. We have um, wireless 2.4 gigahertz microphone, I think. I don't know. It's own proprietary connection. We have uh, the Wi-Fi for the business. And then we have a separate Wi-Fi router for the stream. And then we have... Uh, each one of these individual color changing bulbs is a, a Wi-Fi connection. And then we have that little switch over there. That's another uh, Zigbee connection. And then, oh yeah, yeah, we got these little RGB strips that are Bluetooth connections. That's a few things, I think. That's more than one. And I got three of them by my brain. This is safe. safe. Hello, my name is Mud. <laughs> it's like an old, oh god, what was it? An old, like, old cartoon. The, that rooster dude, I think. I think that's the one it was with. Foghorn Leghorn. There was like some stunt guy lost his mind. He's like, hello, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Mud. And he just passes out. That's probably me. That's probably me. One good thing about these types of cars, when you get into like, to J Japanese? I think. Uh, the, uh, the seals are typically a little bit looser. Is the GoPro working? I'm seeing lots of pixels. I sure hope so. I may have to tweak the colors a little bit more. That it's not the cleanest of, of feeds. It's about, I've got it to about as good as I can possibly get it. So, and it's, it starts to mess with like, there's the, the lighting that's in the studio. You have to have like particular type of lighting. And I'm still trying to figure out what that lighting is. So like we put this big diffuser thingy overhead and then it also depends on where you look. Like, there's a lot of things. Do you not use stainless steel for prep? No, not typically anymore. If the glass, it comes in uh, already pretty clean, there's no sense in scraping it. I only really use a razor blade now for stickers. I used to use them on absolutely every window. The floor was littered with razor blades. And then, I left and I had to pay for them. And then I figured out less expensive ways. But then it kind of like 
showed me um, you don't you don't always have to use a razor blade. Like there were hard rules for me, like always use a razor blade, always do this, always do that. It's like a lot of glass is already clean, like f from like surface. Uh, speckles and stuff like that. There's always that chance, but that's why you go over it with like a, a clay bard and like a light scraper and stuff like that, and you'll be good. Oh, somebody told me to pull out the sweep on these. No, like look, 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 at, look at these seals, man. Look, look at how loose that is. You see, you see that seal, and look at this. So they're like way easy to tuck. What tools do I carry? Uh, it's kind of a lot to go through. I have a video of just that though. Look for like 2019 tools. The video is still identical to 2020. I just should probably change the title to 2021 now. Is there anything to worry about on a two on an F-150 extended? No, generally not. The only thing is always, if you're gonna be tinning the full windshield, put some stuff along the dash, because there is a BC, there's, there's a module straight down on like particular ones. And it's just a good thing to do. You can pretty much soak down the doors in the back and everything and, and have a good time. Um, cover the switches too, but that's, those are like just broad spectrum rules. There's, there's no specific things to an F-150 that would raise an alarm. Now the Rams, on the other hand, I have a video dedicated to that, so. We're just going to peel this off and wipe it off. I don't like leaving the water sitting there. We'll put more back over it. So how do I fix my phone? I gotta go to like the Verizon store? I haven't gone there in forever. Go talk to somebody. Hopefully they just give me a new SIM card and it fixes the issue, but I, do I actually don't think it's the SIM card. I have a feeling it's the SIM tray or a software bug. Ah, sh oh wait, no, I know what I gotta do. I gotta reset my phone and first see if that fixes the issue. Cause that's what I would say if I was a tech dude at a Verizon store. Did you try factory resetting the phone? It's like, did I try literally re re erasing everything and then starting from scratch again? <sighs> no. Well, you should try that. I'm excited to start tinning, but I'm scared from people telling, fuck those people. Those people want you to fail. <laughs> Just go do it. Just like get, you're better off with lower risk situations too. So if like you have your own car, man, you'll get another car. Just go ham. And then friends and family, like just, just go ham. You learn a lot. You'll like, you'll be really scared and nervous. And it's like that will force you to mess up. And then you just got to power through it. I literally watched somebody for like two weeks. <laughs> Go ham, bro. Um, I literally like, so when I started, I watched, I watched somebody for like two weeks. He was, he was brought in to tint and also teach me. And he's like, I don't want you touching anything for like two weeks. And I was like, awesome. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to start. I'm good. I'll just watch this dude do it. And he tints very similar to how I still tint, except there's one crazy thing that he did. He does, I don't think he tints anymore. He got an actual job. He would, he would hold the, the conquer, this tool, he would hold it like this for back windows, like ninja swipe it. And I still can't do this. I hold it like this. 
and your hand kind of hits the back window. This is better, but fuck this. I, how do you, this is like, yeah. <laughs> That's like the only thing. And then there, uh, there's a funny, funny little story. I used to always drop the scraps. I used to drop the scraps on the ground. And it was like, it was just like ingrained in me to just like drop them on the floor. What? No, there's audio. And then uh, one day, or no, no, in, so I'm getting distracted. Um, so he like, he had a hard reminder. Every time I dropped a scrap on the floor, he would take like his spray bottle and like hit me over the back of the head. Like some Mr. Miyagi bullshit. It worked though. I stopped dropping scraps on the ground. He was a good dude. Had a lot of fun working with him. But yeah, uh, anyways, after that, when I actually started, oh, I was a mess, man. And I was in a shop environment. And it, it was like, Okay, he's here for a period of time, and then he's not going to be here. And then you're going to have to do all the tent work. And you don't have anybody to ask. And oh, look, you have a group on the internet called Tint Dude, because Facebook groups weren't, weren't a thing. And the Tint Dude group was like, fuck you. If you asked anything in that group, they would harass you. Tint Dude was such a toxic place, man. That's one reason I ended up making my channel. Well, one, I wanted to be a YouTuber. And two, uh, it, the group was really toxic, and so I just, I was like, fuck it. I'll make my own thing. Have you ever fallen on the clear liner? Uh, completely fallen? don't remember if I have completely fallen. Definitely slipped up. I used to skateboard, so I have like a little bit of like, whoa, and I can catch myself maybe a little bit. That's probably as much as my skateboarding has ever gotten me in life. Saved me from a couple of spills. <laughs> There's some grumpy ass fuckers there, 100%. hundred percent man it was such like it was the culture was so annoying and like it was really early on too so like it's really kind of it's interesting to see what people react to you can have the most perfect tint job on a beautiful car and now people do not care they just like cool car bro and then move on but then there was like there, there would be the occasional picture of somebody that posted a car in their shop. And then people would be like, what's that over there in the corner? Your shop looks like shit. Fuck you. And it's like, god damn, man. <laughs> Calm down. Oh, yeah. And then the culture was like, if you used a plotter, then you weren't a tinner. And now that's kind of like flip-flop. Like, there's a bunch of people that are like, why wouldn't you use a plotter now? I don't mind if you use one. I just personally don't. They're handy, and you can still tint plenty of cars with them. But that's a different conversation. Now some of the, the discussions are funny. They're like, there's like team take the door panels off and team not take the door panels off. And I don't take the door panels off, but I'm sure as hell don't treat it like a team. It's like, you do you, man. <laughs> I'm going to walk around in tin cars without them knowing. You could tin on the outside that way. Tin them. Leave a card asking for donations, and then you might have the police show up at your door. Sounds like a good 
good idea. So these roll downs are going really, really well. And I wish this car stopped there. I'm not looking for, not looking forward to that. Just make sure, if you do the police cars, just make sure you do 5% because that's all they want. I'm, I'm, I'm a cop, I want 5%. Like, I don't care if you're a cop, it's just really dark. Are you sure? I'm a cop. So that wasn't the response. Okay. Okay, dude. All right. I gotta like roll this down just a bit. This is when pulling the seal would have been helpful, but. A pass at. It was just such a funny response. My robot voice said, pass out. Seems, seems we've all been saying it wrong. Webcam. Oh, dang! Look at this. Look at this window. Isn't this a grade A window? GoPro. What the f Ah, that's so cool. It worked. It's been consistent. So why did it mess up in the first five seconds? I've, uh, I've grown up a little bit past 5% though. I actually never had 5% for more than 10, five minutes? Five minutes or so on my car. 5% here and there in five minutes. Here and gone in five minutes. So, I like, I had my car in like 35 because my, my dad would give me shit for going darker. Than 35. He's like, I don't want you driving with 20 or darker. And I was like, but dad, I want to go darker. I want to be cool. I put LED lights in my car because I'm cool. <laughs> you know, all those high school things. And then eventually when I started tinning, I got darker to like 15 on the front, five on the back. And then we were talking about windshields and And then he, uh, uh, what was it? I had 15. I got all the way down to like 15. 15 and 5. And then I put 5 on my front doors. And I sat in the car. And I looked out. And I was like, nope. This is, this is too much. I can't. I didn't even make it out the garage door. I was just like, nah, I can't do it. It's too much. We've reached the limits. That darkness bug where you're just like, ah, oh, it's just not dark enough. And you look at your own car too much. Play bar. These are very clean top edges. LED lights to make the car look modern. Yeah, at a time when like it didn't it did not did not make it look better. 
<laughs> I started messing around with LED lights on my first car, which was a 93 Buick Century. There was nothing that you could do to make that car look cool. I put, I messed around with what I had, and I, I had computer speakers, I had uh, a cheap LED kit from AutoZone, when at the time, there wasn't color changing stuff, that was just crazy talk. LEDs were still very new. Uh, cold cathode tubes is what people were using. Like there were neons and then there were cold cathode tubes. Underglow, underglow I wanted really bad. But underglow was just like too, it was way too much. And it was too much work. I was like, oh, I gotta drill through the body or something. How do I get away with not doing that? I did like the dumb stuff of like routing the, the power wire kind of like around the firewall. Pimp my ride. I watched that show. I watched that show. It was a good show. That was the culture then too. People don't do that anymore. There's too many good enough things in cars and it's just like all the aftermarket stuff has fallen off. Most of it's too expensive. Like there's, I think the only things now is like you got window tint still, you have, you can change your like headlights. Uh, you can get like full housings for your headlights and taillights sometimes depending on the car. Um, the radio on most cars though is just not worth messing messing around with though. Remote starts still are a thing even though they're still baking them in but that's a dying, a dying business for sure. They did a lot of dumb stuff. Yeah, but those were the days, man. Those were like the jackass days. And then you had like shows like Viva La Bam. MTV. When MTV like turned into hilarious like random shit like that. It was funny. Oh, dang. What is this window doing? This window's doing some weird stuff. We gotta be careful. Still good. Okay, good. A goldfish in the car seat? That's something they did? I missed that. That's funny. The tuner industry is big? Is it? I guess I still see things from time to time. But I don't know how big it actually is. Maybe I'm missing a whole subculture. It's kind of like window tinting in comparison. Like, you kind of think window tinting is big because so many people get it to, like, their front doors and stuff like that. But it's still, in comparison to a lot of things, pretty small. This side is slightly tighter than the other side. But we did it. We did it! The tuner industry is big with diesel trucks. What? Why? What's interesting about a diesel truck? Is it just to see how much shit that they can tow? It's a diesel. It's just...
<laughs> the bell didn't notify me. Dang, dude. YouTube keeping us down. What are we going to do, man? YouTube. That YouTube algorithm is suppressing us smaller creators, man. We got to rise up and complain. I don't know. The only other thought is notifications get shut off somehow. There were some people, I caught wind of like something small where it's like if you, every once in a while they'll turn off the notification bell for you. I don't think they do that intentionally, but YouTube's very algorithmic. So they're constantly trying to figure out what you're most interested in. Subscribers, notification bells, all that. It's, it's not as... The, the true power is just having a good title, thumbnail, and halfway decent content to back that up. And then you get placed in uh, recommended. And if you get placed in recommended and your video does well from there, then you do you do well. I know because I make some silly meme videos and then they do really well. So if I want to just be more popular for window tinting, then I got to go get some, some weird shit and tint with it. Can you shrink a back window with bubble gum? We got a dryer sheet. I have, wait, I think, no, it's here. I was gonna say, my dry shrink prep is somewhere else. This is where it is. You know what, you know what it is? People, people with big trucks tune them and make big power. You know what it is? Truck people love their trucks. Same thing with, with wrang Jeep, Jeep Wrangler people. They love their Wranglers. So they're always looking for stuff to do to them. So that, that part actually makes more sense to me. Especially country folk. If you live out in the country, you love your big trucks. And then you want to lift it. And then you want to add lights. You just want all the LED bars. And you just want to blind everybody on the road. That's what you want to do. <laughs> Which I can respect. But it's not, it's not, <laughs> it's not my thing. Oh! It works. That's nice. This is going to be a dumb question, but how do I shrink a back window efficiently? Uh, with practice. Get yourself one of these. Roll a film, a lot of film, and just put yourself on a timer and keep trying to beat your time. Race yourself. How much do you charge for a full car plus windshield ceramic all around? Uh, without a sunroof, it would be 200, uh, 600. Technically 595 to keep it right below six. Your, your studio is the equivalent of a lifted lighted truck. That is correct. We all have our hobbies. <laughs> Mine is just not in a car. It's in my studio. GoPro. GoPro. Dang, that's fun. You guys, you guys don't know real fun until you can voice command your cameras and it works. Wait, we should, ooh, we're gonna wait on that one. We're gonna do the front ones first. Giving away film? Man, I gotta, I pay for my film. I gotta, she, I gotta fucking make money back, bro. 
This looks good. Which is like, yeah, I hope so. But like, still, like when you when you do a window and it turns out like super clean, they're like it still never gets old for me. It's just kind of like you're always shooting for like perfection on every window. And when you like, dang, that looks good. I always can like take a second to appreciate when a window just looks really good. And that's my work or anybody else's work. So when I have like, you know, there's some like shit people that are like, hey, I got this tinted at another place. Can you look at it and give me your honest opinion? I've talked people out of redoing their front doors because they're like, ah, I got this, there's this little thing right here. And I'm like, I see what you're talking about, but what it's gonna cost you to get it redone, I don't know if you're gonna be happy with like getting it redone. Like this is legitimately a good job. Just, just tell them straight up, stay, it's floating, stay. All right, so these ones are no fun. Um, as a shop, is it the shop's responsibility for tools or the employee's responsibility for tools? There's a number of ways. There's, there's a number of ways that you can do it. Real quick, I want to comment on this one, though. People in the Facebook groups make it look and sound hard, but you make it look easy. Yeah, because there's a bunch of fucktards in the group that just, like, overanalyze the whole thing. And it's just like, man, you just shut up and tint, bro. And I mean that in a nice way. Like, I don't fault anybody that's new for asking questions. Um, but, like, when it gets into, you know, should I use baby shampoo or Dawn? Should I use this ratio or that ratio? It's like you're splitting hairs to the point that doesn't matter. Just go try a handful of things and just, like, get, just, just do it. Stop thinking. Go do it. Scooby. Oh, God. I heard this in a stream. Scooby-Doo. <laughs> and then something about Scooby not doing. But be a Scooby that doesn't do. What was the other question? Sorry, I got distracted. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Oh yeah, the shop. Shop with employees, what are they responsible for? There are no hard rules on that. Um, it's really like there's some people that pay hourly. There's some that pay uh, daily rates. There's some that pay commission and hourly. Um, generally speaking, uh, most shops have provided uh, the tools and film but that's if there's money to do it, right? It's just kind of like, hey, if the tinner is more responsible for all the tools, then compensate them so they can get their tools. But tools aren't very expensive. So as a shop, you could do it as a perk to look better to your employees and be like, yeah, we'll cover all the tools, we'll cover all the film, just do a good job. And that's one less thing that tinner has to worry about at the end of the day. And then maybe they'll do better work for you. Know what I mean? Take care of your people. I feel like I'm gonna have to do this one again, but we'll try it. I brought it down a little bit, so we'll go under the bottom edge and then we'll just shoot for the moon. I'm scared. I don't think I have to sh shrink it, but I think I will. Unnecessary steps, like we do. Like we do. I should probably check the GoPro soon, but how long has it been? Uh, 30? Okay. Thank you all for being here. This makes it fun. If I was just here by myself, 
I always go a little crazy. But if I don't have something to put If I don't have something to put on. Which one of my favorite streamers just decided to be all Zen Buddhist and like not put his uploads on YouTube anymore and just when if you make it to the stream you make it to the stream and then if you don't make it then I'm sorry fuck you and it's like well goddamn man that sucks I now have a baby so I try to tune into what I can <laughs> bummer put on some smooth jazz that is probably something that could be arranged, because I'm sure there's a fair amount of royalty-free smooth jazz. But as far as royalty-free good music, that's a whole nother story. Why did I do that? Why did I put it there? What a dummy. What a dummy. <laughs> if you guys can name the artist, then I can't play it. One of my favorite streamers like to stream in the middle of the night. He's actually pretty smart for doing that too. Especially if you go towards early in the morning, you get like the, you get a foreign audience. Uh, you get kind of like a mix actually. And it's like, it's stuff, I, I'm okay with not being there live if you get something good out of it. So like, even if you don't make the stream, you get to see a full car being tinted. We talk about stuff. It may not be, exactly what you hoped but you know it's it's still it's still got some like longevity past when it streams and his stuff is a lot of like good good business talks and whatnot so he like uploads dedicated videos of what he feels like is stuff that should be on youtube and then everything else is just like poof gone Is there a difference between 25 and 20%? Yes, 5%. <laughs> you never can control the car radio? I'm okay with that. I remember my family's vehicle growing up. We had these like we had these cassette tapes that we would play, and it was the same tapes, like the same six tapes. And we'd just rotate them. So, I'm wondering what that is in 2020. I'm guessing that's like YouTube music and fucking TikTok videos. Also, I keep Bluetooth headphones on a lot of the time too. <laughs> Just, we now, we have like, you know, the truly wireless ones, you just take one earbud and you just put it in like the left ear and you're just like, mm-hmm. But come on, who doesn't want to hear the wheels on the bus 5,000 times? How much do you earn monthly? It's a personal question. Where? Where is the better question? YouTube is, YouTube's all right actually now. It used to not be. It used to, like, YouTube was a roller coaster. YouTube got to the point where it was like, yay, YouTube's great. And then YouTube had a 40, 45% revenue split. And then it was like, oh, this sucks. And then they, uh, CPMs dropped too. And I was like, oh, no. But YouTube depends on the month. The winter months is a little slower uh, for YouTube. Come springtime, it's better. But it, like, I this goes based on effort too. So like, YouTube was 
uh, this month is like a couple grand. So that's really, really helpful. Oh, don't you do it. Did I do it? Oh, I think I got it. This is tricky. Like, like I said, you get that little like roll in the tent at that top corner. I have to tent outside and it's getting cold. Why, why, why are you tenting outside? Go inside, it's nice. Go, go like find a shop, not a non-tint shop. Go find like a glass shop. Go find something that works with cars and start a tint program. And then you'll be tinting inside. Yes, there's revenue sharing, but the whole, the whole idea is that it works out for both of you guys. So there was this, uh, like, so, okay, I got, I got stories, guys. I, I've been tending for at least 10 years, so I have some stories. I have some creative stories. I've been, I've been tending around a handful of places, so I've seen a good variety of things. I've seen things that work well, things that work not so well. And even when it was slow, fuck tinning outside, man. So I worked with a guy. This guy actually is the, now the proud owner of Tint Kegs and Sun Distributing, and he's doing great. He was, he was determined. He was like, so we were tinning for, this is actually a little bit before I signed on with them. But... Uh, it carried over, and he, and he still did it while I, while I was tending with them. So we were tending for this car audio company, and they're the biggest car audio company remote starts in Michigan. They're called cartoons. And come wintertime, they're too busy to book window tent. So they tie up all their bays. They're small stores. They tie up their three, sometimes two bays, with car audio and remote starters. And then you kinda, you have to work around the employees. And then they got to the point or along December where like they're booked out for like two months solid. So like they don't give a shit about window tint anymore. They're just like, yeah, you all can fuck off for a couple months and come back. Well, still need to make money. So what he, what he ended up doing was getting a tent and he would tent in the parking lot with a propane heater in a tent and string that bitch up with like, with lights and stuff. And it worked, but he would have to like, he'd try and set it up for a full day, but he'd often like set it up there, tent a couple cars and then leave, tent somewhere else. And there's like a 15, he got it down to like, it took him 15 minutes to tear it down, 15 minutes to put it back up. But that's still, man, oh, it's so, so much. So I, I personally think the best situation is to like, this can be challenging, but find, find a company that wants to add window tinting onto their list of services and already has a client base. And then give them, give them a day a week. Give them a day a week. Um, and then you go in, you do the work, they handle the customers, and then you leave. That's it. That's like, that's like the whole deal. Then you don't have to tin outside. Merry Christmas. I came across your channel when you were new. Thank you for all the tips. Oh, that's cool. Thanks for, for watching. I'm glad it was actually helpful back then, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got me there. All right, I want to try that, but I'm only 14. All right, dude, you, you got some time. 
Guys, clap it up for the guy that's 14 in chat trying to make it work. I'll give it to you there. Other option is maybe you can get a storage unit and maybe work something out there. Storage units don't really want you doing that, but you might be able to find something that you can work with because people do actually get away with doing that. So that's my one thing that you might be able to try. But good, good for you, man. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I hope you figure it out. That's cool. GoPro. GoPro. I'm moving to Michigan. You hiring? No, I... I couldn't, uh, I actually wouldn't be able to, to get you work right now. We might get to that point, but it's not right now. What percentage? We're doing 20, and then we're going to do 50 on the windshield. There's a few storage units. I'd say that's your best bet. It's, it's really not a bad idea. Keep it low key. You're not going to be doing that much work. You're going to be here and there. Yeah, cars are dropped off. Yeah, yeah. The hardest thing is honestly landing clients for something like that because you got to like, hey, go to the storage place, and they're like, what? But there you go. Do that. Also, you like. You have logistical problems with not being able to actually drive the car down the road. <laughs> so, I applaud your efforts, man. That's cool. Okay, we need, what do we need? Dude, I don't know what happened, but this, this whole camera switching thing was, was glitching webcam. And now it just, now it just works. GoPro. How cool is that shit? Do you have snow on the ground? No, we've, we've had very little. We've had very, very little snow. Which is good and not good. Because if it's gonna be cold, you kinda want it to look not depressing, but it's been very gray. It's been very gray and very depressing. I can show you. It's just sad outside. I have the power. I can walk out that door. I think the Wi-Fi will hold. It might get a little, a little wonky if I walk farther away from the door. But, you know, I haven't used a, an easy reach in quite a long time. They are very handy for these types of windows. Because, like, all right, so this is a tri-edge, and I use these things to death. I love these things. But they're a little bit wider than something like an easy reach. So when you go to like push this here, it ends up like bumping the edge. It doesn't go under it. And then you're like, you're just like, come on, man, dude. And then this is like, it slides under like at least easier than that does. So easy reaches are handy, but I don't, I wouldn't use them on a lot of windows. I just save them at this point for stuff like this. And I'm actually really glad that I had one because we made that one quarter window work, so hopefully we'll make this one work. Let's make sure this is flushed. Dirt, dirt goes hiding in that top corner and you just don't want to fight with it.
Same thing with like the the shank. The shank has a blunt end on it. I wish it was a little bit sharper. Maybe one day. Maybe one day they'll they won't yoink it from the the art industry and they'll make their own. Yoink. Alright, there we go. So you like you want that top edge to tuck in just a little bit. If you can do that, then you're pretty much home free. But what'll often happen is like you won't quite get that top edge in and then it'll start butting up against that seal. The floor is like a chessboard, but big. Yeah, you know, I've noticed it's a bit dramatic for the GoPro, but it makes for good pictures. Like, there's this, I really like the look, but you know, like wearing uh, like a, a, gr a tight patterned shirt on camera, you get that like weird pattern effect you start seeing that with all like the gray lines and stuff like that. Like it's a little funny on a GoPro, but I really like it. So, <laughs> what is cool is that these floors are already coated, but I would probably want them to be something else, but hey, it came with it. So I'm certainly not complaining about it. Having like, coated floors versus just ugly cracked concrete is like is is wild really really crazy to actually have something like that all right i'm just trying to very gently squeegee this one out like i said a bunch of times these are not super fun These, you just have to be very gentle and try and get as tight as you can. It's really easy to just kind of throw them out of whack. It's looking good though. That wasn't so bad. It's looking good. Woo! Back ones are a little bit easier. Start with the difficult ones, get those out of the way, and you don't have to worry about them so much. But hopefully they don't suck away all the time, and then you have to play catch up. Yeah, buddy, it's looking good. Same thing with this. Good stuff. Yay, I like it. Cool. Rear quarters. Now we got these rear quarters. Similar, similar type of gaskets. You got a tight edge on the front. These back edges are a little bit looser. So, same type of thing. Just hopefully, hopefully not as uh, difficult. All right. What do we got to do now? Where's my roll? There's my roll. We should probably start to prep the windshield so it's dry by the time we get to it. I'd be asleep in class right now, but I'm wide awake because of the screen. Well, cool, I'm glad it's interesting. Got a, got a few windows to shrink today. Got a back window, got a windshield. So what I'm gonna be doing is trimming this bottom edge off. I actually 
don't know if it's tall enough, but we're going to find out. Did you see that new method of that Patrick showed of somebody doing a windshield? I did not, actually. Ooh, we are just enough. Good stuff. What was the interest? What did he do? I'm always game for improvements. Here, let's do this. How should we do this? What's the tool you use for shrinking? The card is, uh, it's a felt card. So just search for like soft felt card or felt card or uh, the, there's a company that makes them too called MacTac. So that's the like, the higher quality, better made one. Could you have used that piece vertically? Uh, you probably could have. Um, sometimes though the factory edge isn't going to match up. Like I would try and match it up with this. Sometimes it's perfect and sometimes it's not. It might have been worth, worth like looking into, but I'm going to try and keep it like just a little overlapped. Then we'll take it over here around these little guys. Oh yeah, you can shrink any which way that you want uh, as long as it goes with the, with the factory edge of the film. So like you, you can flip a piece of tint. Uh, you'll see me do that sometimes on trucks when I don't have a, a short roll. He removed the liner, folded it, and then put it on the windshield. Ah, uh, I've seen like a fold method. I guess I'd be curious to see what he did. I, I, I just got done reverse rolling. I like like I've been practicing that for for I guess a while now. I really like where my reverse rolls are. I don't know if I would switch from there. It's a pretty straightforward way of doing a a windshield just takes some practice. So when you flip it, you just shrink on the side instead of the bottom. Yeah, 100%. So a lot of times I'll take a short roll um, and use it for doors. Um, uh, like, imagine this was truck, right? And I had a 20 inch roll or a 24, and I didn't have that anymore. So, usually I use a 20 or 24 inch. Um, well, that, I'm not going to be able to get two doors uh, on a truck out of a 36. It's just too short. So, you split it in half, you'll have a gap at the top. So, you use shorter rolls, or um, if I'm out, I'll take a 36 inch roll and I'll flip it sideways and I'll shrink. Um, I'll shrink down this edge here. So it's not, it's, it's not always perfect, but it's usually good enough. Truck windows are generally, you know, they're taller, they're less curved. Most of them are, and most of the time the shrinking is, is good enough. So. Good luck. I gotta check my GoPro. It's just gonna die, and then we're gonna be in bad, bad state. Cannon. Still working.
It's pretty good. Oh, yeah, we're almost dead. Good timing. I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this whole voice thing. It's good enough. The, you like have to have a distinct delay in your speech for it to pick up, and that that I can I can deal with. It'll probably save from like accidental things. It, is the stream ending? No, actually, you good timing. We're got to do these back quarters, the full back window, and the full windshield. So we still got a while to go. How did the front quarters go? Not bad. Not bad, actually. Tricky, but not bad. First try, actually, which is good. First try. OK, we'll have a sip of coffee. And use some magical powers. GoPro. GoPro. Bam. That's so cool. Tips. Tips on getting my first customers. Um, start posting whatever you're practicing with and make it look like you're more legit than you are. That'll probably help. And then put the word out to maybe friends and family. It's going to be slow. But I, I overplanned it a lot, actually. Getting, getting people for tint, it's, it's kind of hard sometimes to get like the, the, the right people, like people that aren't just interested in the lowest price and, and, wait, and trying to just like shop you around and aren't really serious or anything. Because when you get like a good client, you know, you, you'll learn really quickly how easy it can be with like when you start getting the right clients. It's just like, hi, I'm interested in window tent. How much is it? And you tell them like, oh, okay, cool. And then like you hope they looked into your business at least a little bit, but it should be pretty straightforward. But posting on places like Facebook, Facebook and Google, Google My Business. Those are, I think, the best places to probably start. I mean, go as many places as you can, but Facebook is kind of rough around here. I generally have had more success with people finding me off of maps and then handling them over the phone. But it's still like, it's still hit or miss. And I'll take deposits um, with, a fair, with a fair amount of clients. Sometimes I just don't have time over the phone to take a deposit, so I r always run that risk. That happened to me on, on Monday, actually. No, Saturday. I had two doors that were supposed to show up first thing in the morning, and they didn't. But then I had a full car that was supposed to show up an hour later, and that came in. So, but yeah, it, when I was tinning at home in the garage, like I only was scheduling one car in a day. So whatever showed up was like super important for me. So I would, I got to the point where I was like, look, I am not going to spend the time. I didn't say this to, to the clients, but it was just like, I can't afford for people to just book a spot and not show up. Like, sure, to them it's no big deal because it was free. And, like, I allowed them to, like, waste the time. But I stopped. I stopped that. What's the most expensive car that you've tended? That list is not actually very exciting. Why'd you stop tending from home? 
uh, the city, <laughs> the city didn't like me tending from home. I had some neighbor that called, and I don't know who, and they just, they put a, a hard stop to it. They're like, yeah, you can do, you can do light business out of there. Just, you know, keep it between these hours and no front advertising and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, okay, cool. Yeah, sure. And that's, that's exactly what I was doing. And then all of a sudden it's like, you have some neighbor call and then it's like, oh, what you're doing is illegal. And it's like, wait, what the fuck? And the more people that I... The more people that I talk to, uh, like every once in a while, I'll come across somebody that tells me um, that the city that I live in is a royal pain in the ass. So some of them just are. You, I'd suggest finding out beforehand. <laughs> It's no fun, no fun. I'd still be tending from home. Yeah, I did have uh, the occasional person drop off overnight. Most people wanted to pick up the same day. But there was like, I think there was a couple people that ended up dropping off overnight. We did a late night stream too. That was fun. It was super cool too. Like I, I did not want to get into a shop. I much rather would have stayed home, but Home had some really annoying logistical problems. So at, from home, um, like you, you, driveway space is an issue. You're kind of like always waiting for the, for the customer. So when you're done and you tell them you're done and you're waiting on, on them picking up the car, you're kind of like, you're not on edge, but like you're just like, you know, always checking like cameras and stuff for them to show up. And you don't feel like you can't like leave. You kind of have to just like hang out and stuff like that. So there's just those handful of things that were, were a little bit irritating. But overall, um, it was pretty good. I think less, there was a lot less people that reached out because I was tending from home. But that made it a little bit more rough on a place like Google Maps easier on Facebook. So being in a shop has its advantages, but it definitely is more expensive. Like we've got that thing running, heating up 3,000 square feet. Do we need to heat up that many feet? I don't think so, but we'll, we'll do it. It's better in the summer though. I was cooking. It was myself. <laughs> it was very warm in the, in the other garage. And then it would have been very cold. The one thing I was really uncertain of is like, when it, when it gets into winter time, how, ba how bad would it have been trying to talk to clients out in the snow or like in a propane garage. Pro probably would have gotten annoying. That's weird. Why did that not cut? There we go. Ooh, that uh, scratch glass on a on a BMW, an eighteen BMW. Um, no, that's very specific. So I, you don't just have 
random scratched BMW glass. That's something that you you would have you would see before you go to tint it. If it's an issue in question after it was already tinted, it likely was from whoever tinted it. So if it's like and and looking at how the scratches are, if they're um, let, let me let me back up just a little bit. If they're on the inside, then it's probably for sure the tinter. If it's straight up and down lines on the outside, then probably not. And I mean like dead straight lines. Anything else more swirly and whatnot, it's probably the tinter. Like, like you see when I go to scrape the inside of the glass, right? I'm doing like this motion. So if they're like weird scratches or, you know, just kind of like all over the place, then yeah, it's probably from like something that you shouldn't have been doing. Sucks. I've paid for my fair share of glass though. It's just kind of comes with the territory every once in a while. Like you, you learn. I'd break stuff, um, scratch things here and there. That's one reason I use my tape on the back. Like, I got, I started putting way too many scratches uh, in uh, on back windows. So that's why I do this now. Where did I get the peel board? They're in my back room, actually. They're house windows. Apparently, there was a house window company that was in here before I was. So I took one of them apart and put it to good use. Ever tinted a famous person vehicle? Uh, yeah. There was like just a couple of more low-key Detroit Lions football players and I think maybe like a Red Bull or something. Um, but the one that comes to mind was uh, a dude from Pirates of the Caribbean. Um, I don't know his name. It's Kalib, Kaliba or something like that. Ryan, Brian, something Kaliba. Uh, he's the the little person in Pirates of the Caribbean, and he was super cool. He was uh, it was funny. I don't have clients ever do this, but he like, he had like an older car. He's from Detroit, um, and he had. Uh, a library of classic 80, like 80s high school type movies. Like, and he really liked just old classic movies. And he put one on and just hung out in the car the entire time I tinted it. And he just liked talking about older movies, which I don't know a lot about. Like, I, I didn't know the ones that, that he was playing, but it was cool. He was a super nice guy. His favorite movie <laughs> is Pirates of the Caribbean. This is the favorite movie he did. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> that's my that's my like one celebrity story. Maybe we'll get somebody else eventually. Maybe somebody will see the stream. And then they'll live in California and not Michigan, so rip. <laughs> but there's a fair amount of like popular figures that came out of Detroit, so maybe someday. Maybe we'll tint Dr. Disrespect's Lamborghini someday. What's the farthest? Uh, Canada? Which <laughs> isn't too far. It's just not much of a thing, honestly. And hasn't been. There's people that, that have driven, I think, across the state and maybe like slightly from out of state and whatnot, but I've been pretty low key. 
So this, this whole studio thing is very new. So, at, you know, as long as the channel's been around, it's just I haven't made myself, I haven't made myself known. So I haven't been easy to contact. I haven't made where I work out of very known. Um, more until now. Now I'm getting people that are coming out to be like, oh, I didn't know you were in this area. That's cool. So it's happening a little bit, but it's still not any type of crazy big scale yet. And I don't know if it ever will be, but my goal for this place is to like line up a full car at least three days a week so I can stream. That's like short term goal. That's what I want to do. Three days a week, three, four days a week. I want to like, I'll tempt more than that because I have to, <laughs> but at least three, three to four days a week so I can do a consistent stream. That's, that's goal, goal number one. Slow season right now, coming into winter, or we're in winter. We'll be in springtime eventually, and when that picks up, we should be a lot more consistent. But I got time. I got a two-year lease on this. So as long as I just keep streaming, man, it should be good. Are you going to be doing classes? Uh, yeah, I will be. I don't have any specific info on it. And being that we just had a baby too, I just, oh man. There's just a lot. So it's like, it's hard to like manage and set stuff like that up. And then I honestly forget about it. <laughs> Thank you for the reminder, actually. What's the best film that you've used? It's kind of like a... It's an interesting question. I mean, it would seem like it'd be pretty cut and dry, but there's lots of companies that have different advantages across, like, particular across particular films. So if you want just a good shrinking film uh, that's gonna last, uh, this stuff right here, GeoShield Pro Classic, um, it's a very, very good, nice to work with film. I think the glue sticks a little bit much. Um, so Avery Dennison NR is like a close second. Both of those I I'm very happy with. So, and then there's like sister, not sister companies, but like sister films pretty much. So you have ones like Solar FX. You have film on, uh, you have uh, Geo, er, no, I'm sorry, uh, the, 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 the Tint Depots, uh, Superior Charcoal, stuff like that. Those are very easy to shrink in term, like, it, it, like easy to shrink, reliable films. You can get a super cheap film and it'll be really easy to shrink. They'll shrink better than professional grade. How do you get the bottom window to lay without the dot matrix showing? Uh, it's full of water, and when it dries out, it'll show. There, there's no current solution that is easily accessible like there's you can't get to it the films aren't made to stick to it so there's just there's not a whole there's really no options that are out there I think I saw like one film that a company made but it's not by any company it was like specifically a dot matrix film which I don't know what they're doing, but they're definitely changing something, and my guess would be the glue. 
you either make a softer material or a thicker glue. So. Which would be hide, easier to hide dirt specks though. So that would be an advantage. Disadvantage might be that the glue sucks. I don't know. I have another webcam I should probably set up. I think I'm gonna do that. I have like a follow me camera coming, but I have one webcam there. Webcam. Hey! GoPro. So I might be able to hook up two or three of them. Being that we now have a super fun, easy way to change cameras. I think we could set up a couple simple cameras with a lot of cable and then just easy extra perspective might be super helpful. Because if it's easy to set up, the problem is always like you move the camera, go to the computer, change the scene, readjust the camera, and it's just not fluid. But now, Canon. Cannon. No, it's broken! <laughs> Cannon. Oh, dang, it really is broken. Webcam. Huh, webcam works. GoPro. <laughs> well, it mostly works. Move we'll sort out the bugs. Still the same felt card? Yeah, because they're awesome. Goddamn. Why are you guys harping on me for my felt cards? The grosser they look, the better they are. You start wearing down that edge. Make it more of like a point. And it still does the same job, but it presses down the film a little bit better. Saboro. So we'll wrap up this back window. And then we'll do the windshield. And she'll be sitting pretty. My dream car? Oh, you really? That's cool. They don't make many manuals anymore. That is one thing I will for sure miss. It, uh, my, the first car that I, no, I bought the other one. I bought the Buick. Uh, but first car that I wanted to buy that I could afford was a Pontiac, Pontiac G5. And I got it in a manual. Oh yeah. I didn't know how to drive a manual at the time, so I stalled it a lot. <laughs> but I learned on that. It was, I, I, the only thing that sucked was getting stuck in traffic, but I still like driving a manual. Took a little bit to get used to. And, like, it's extra work when you're tired in the morning. Do you ever redo your tint on the Explorer? Not since the last video. Any glass aid sales for the holidays? <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. So the reason being is because the, the, the whole purpose of the store is to like help 
do everything, help continue everything that I do. And so putting a discount on it, it's like, it's not the purpose of really why it exists. <laughs> it's like, I have my, my, my small margin that I make off of it. And it's just like, help support the cause, man. <laughs> so I don't want to discount it. The clay bars got discounted on, um, there's one company. They're at Dragon, but they don't have the, they don't have the tape. The tape's kind of a hard thing to distribute. So the, the main issue with it, it doesn't affect the usefulness of it, but to make it look pretty, we literally, we, we have the rolls cut down into like these, these really small ones. Uh, and then if they sit, they start to telescope out. So we literally press them flat and leave them pressed under like some, some heavy, it's legitimately uh, white Grecian marble. <laughs> it's probably the name, it's probably not real marble, but um, it's, uh, it's nice. It keeps them flat and then when they're ordered, then we package them up. So we package them up as they're ordered. That came as a manual. Yeah, this is a manual. It's nice. I like it. Manuals are manuals are going extinct. Cars are kind of going extinct too. I believe this pops out as I literally pop it out. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Wow, that came out super easy. Interesting. How's the cable come out though? I can't really see it very well. Okay, that pops out. Is it a latch or is it a pin? That's the other question. We'll leave it like this. Sounds so good for a four-cylinder. Oh, I heard the, the turbo fucking spur up, or supercharger, whichever one. I think it was supercharger. It sounds cool. I would do it on stream, but it's, it's like, I don't, I don't do that with customer vehicles. It's like, I, I wouldn't sit here and just like rev it up. It's like, it's not mine. So that's why, like, I wouldn't just... It sounds cool, so just take my word for it or look them up on YouTube. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I don't ever want to play around with somebody's car. You know, I've been accused of that. That's been an interesting thing. Before, before we even started on a car, we were accused of, like, joyriding it. There's this guy. He brought in, like, a, a GTO... And I have respect for that. It's like, I can appreciate a GTO. And then he was like, we're like, okay, let's, uh, we'll take your keys and we'll get started. And he's like, I'm not giving you my keys. And we're like, we got a, we, we got a tenant. And he's like, I don't want you guys joyriding around in my car. Like, do you, do you want us to tin it, though? Yeah, but I'll be back there, and I'll pull it in, and I'll watch you the whole time. And we're like, I didn't, I wasn't, I was filled in after the fact, so I say we. And they're just like, uh, never mind. And he's, he was like, what? He's like, we don't want to tint your car. <laughs> because that's the situation that you're getting into that you just... This is not going to be fun. No matter what you do, chances are you're going to have you're going to have a bad time. It's under warranty. Have fun. <laughs> yeah, but then you got to go. No. You don't don't hard rule hard rule for me. It's like if they were 
If I had like explicit permission, maybe a little bit, but it's just like, I got, I got too much respect for other people's things. You know? And like, it would be cool, but it like, I don't know. Guy that will find the smallest speck of dirt. Oh, 100%. People that wanna like argue with you up front before you even get started is like, that's just like number one red flag right there. I had that situation on like a, a Dodge Ram. There was like, there was a sensor on the mirror and they were wondering what it was, but th like not in any, nobody had a productive conversation about it. It was, they pulled the car in, they pulled the truck in, the customer left, and then I got there and then they were like, hey, can you cut around that sensor? And I'm like, uh, what sensor? Oh, that thing that's on the mirror. We don't know what it is, but he's wondering if it's gonna cause an issue, can you cut around it? And I'm like, mm, how broad does it span out? And they're like, uh, I don't even know what it is. Hang on, I'll call the guy. <laughs> it's like, why'd you let him leave? You didn't even iron out what was actually gonna happen. You just let him leave. Call the dealership, figure it out. It took 45 minutes to get started. And that customer ended in a full refund in court. <laughs> because that's the type of guy he was. Oh, good times. Good times, I tell you. We did the truck, he complained about it, but he never brought it back in. And the way he paid for it was with a check, which why they accepted the check, I have no fucking clue. And then next thing you know is he's uh, taking, taking the company to court. And it's like, he, he's never even brought it back, he just, fucking skedaddled, he didn't pay, and how is he taking it to court? Like, that's all types of fucked. All righty. Well, this is going nice. Oh, I didn't prep the windshield. Oh, that's gonna take time now. I should have prepped the outside. Oh, it's okay. It would be about 10 minutes longer. Tent God, where? Um, I didn't talk to him, but he had issues with the work. He said something about the cuts on the back doors and the rear slider. Oh, you know what? It wasn't him that sued. It was the owner of the shop because he wrote a check. He bounced the check, refused to bring the truck back in so they could even take care of it or look at the problem. And it was like, it was a full truck with a full windshield. I thought you were gonna retire from live streaming after becoming a dad. No. Of course not. I have too much fun doing this. This is, this is like, videos, making videos was, is fun, but it's a, it's a lot of work. So the idea of videos sometimes is actually, I think what sounds more fun. But what is truly more fun is 
investing technology into the stream and then hanging out with you guys while we tin a car. Because it gives me something more entertaining to do. <laughs> Way more fun. I think I got a couple small things to press out at the bottom. I just want to get a good look before I do that so I know where they are. Don't leave us again. Well, I had to, because I just had a baby. So you gotta put in family time. And then I got sick. So I'm trying to, we're trying to take care of a baby, and then I got sick, and then my wife got sick. And then, oh boy, that was fun. Try and feed a baby every, <laughs> literally every two hours. So it's like not, like very small spurts of sleep. And then you, we'd have, like we actually had to feed the baby even if the baby was sleeping. So we had to wake the baby up, change the baby, feed the baby. And it was just like, oh man, it was, it was a long couple of weeks but everybody, everybody's doing better overall. Still some concerns, but man, there's a lot of things. There's definitely a lot of things. Taking care of the newborn and like, it's kind of like expect to lose a good like half, half day with just little things that you wouldn't think of. And then, tr and then it's like you gotta try and make up time for everything else too, so. Congrats, thank you. All right, this corner might have to go get the reach. But I think it might be a bit thick. Oh, we got it, so we're good there. No, not the reach. What's it called? The shortcut. That one. The thing that's really good at tight corners. Ooh. Ooh, that's clean. That looks clean. And there's no dot matrix border on this glass, so the edges are going to look better. Good stuff. I like. All right, now we got the windshield to do. We're probably probably making good time on this right now. Have I ever met anybody in person that's watched me on YouTube? A uh, couple people. Not much. The, my one small moment of stardom was walking into... I, uh, where was it? A Hungry Howie's, I think it was. It was a pizza place. I think it was a Hungry Howie's. There was a guy over the corner, or at, not over the corner, over the counter. And he was like, don't you tint windows? I was like, yeah, I do. He was like, I've seen your channel. It's cool. I was like, oh, thanks, man. And that was it. <laughs> It's my, my five seconds of fame. I made it, boys. Got recognized at a pizza place. <laughs> Although, another one that was pretty funny was my, uh, my brother-in-law. He, he has a Dodge Ram, and he wanted to get some work done to it. And he actually, he watches a, like, watch a bunch of Dodge Ram videos, and he's like, and one of your videos about the BCM popped up in my feed. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, cool. Was your food free? No. And I had to tip, like, because if you didn't, then you're just the YouTuber who's a dick that didn't tip, right? <laughs> 
So, like, uh, it was worse. I felt obligated to tip more because they recognized me. Because then you just leave a bad impression forever. Like, oh, yeah, I've seen his channel. Fucker doesn't tip much. Dang. Dang, dude. That's it. Then you just become the, the tinter that doesn't tip much. But, like, I picked it up. <laughs> what are you supposed to tip? We got a tip. Don't go in dark alleys. I get asked about tips all the time. It's like number one DM. I'm getting into tinning. Do you have any tips for me? It's like I got a whole channel of tips. Is this, is this going to look good? Webcam. No. Webcam. What's this look like? Interesting. I want to put it closer. Huh. Cool. GoPro. That's not bad. Good deal. Coffee. Name of the floor? Uh, it's by a company called Race Deck. Look up Race Deck. Um, it's not soft rubber. It's a hard plastic. It's a stiff plastic. I gotta check my phone. Damn it. Wait, what? Phone is starting. What do you mean it's starting? It's been not started this whole time? God damn, this phone. So, I don't know why, but it... It literally disconnected from the network. So it's not connecting to my carrier right now. And that concerns me. I hope everything's okay. Yeah. It just says an unknown error has occurred. And then if I go try to turn on my data, it says insert a SIM card. But it's in there. And it works in the old phone still. So. I don't know what the deal is. It's really dumb. It's a hell of a problem to have when you're coming in to do a car, though, because you can't really do anything about it. All right, we gotta put, we gotta prep this. So first thing, we're gonna clean it off, and then we're gonna tape it, and then we're gonna dry shrink prep it. Yeah, so let's do that. GoPro. GoPro. Well, bam. I'm over it now. Now it's normal. Voice commands, whatever. Do I have windshield tint on the Explorer? Yes, I have 35. I really like, I really like 35 on a windshield, but that's if you like a darker look. On my wife's blazer, we have on my wife's blazer, we have uh, 30 or 50. And 50 uh, looks really good as well. It's just, what do you want? Like, do you want a bit of a lighter windshield or a darker one? So we did 50 and 35 on hers, which looks great. And then I do usually 35 or 20 on my front doors and then 35 on the windshield. Those are like the two different styles I'd suggest. There's like a little bit of sticky. Yeah, let's put that down. There's like a little bit of sticky up by where the mirror was. I pulled the mirror off, which is not hard to do on these. It doesn't take a screw. There's like a little tab. So I think they do these. I want to say they do these on Hondas as well, some Hondas. They're pretty easy to recognize when you see them. 
So you have this little... So there's this plastic housing, and then this plastic housing pops down, and then there's this little tab here. So you press that down, and then it just slides right off. So they're super easy to take off and put back on. No connectors or anything. So we got this guy up here. And then there's like some adhesive here. So that is something I'm gonna wanna like scrape the window more in that case because there's already adhesive there. There's probably just like a tag here. And then I'll check everything else. It looks like there's just some overspray or something on the inside, but nothing, nothing as bad as that. It looked like there was a suction cup there. Do I take off the Ford mirrors? Uh, yeah, the ones that, that suck. I, oh, no, 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 I don't take them off. I split them. I tried to take them off, but it's very risky shit trying to take those off. So, I don't get them that often, and now all the new Ford trucks uh, have a screw. So, it's more the later models at this point. It's common enough to where most shops will tell them that they'll split it, so. So you're not really like out of place or anything. You know, I wanna find, I like the soak shield, but I, it gets, this gets so annoying. I hate the way this pinches right here at the side because there's no good place to put this extra little bit of rope that always sticks out. Yeah, and then sometimes it pulls the tent out. Yeah, I've had that happen too many times. Where does the door? There's nothing there. Ignore that door. It's just a back closet. It's really messy. And it's where the computer is. <laughs> punched, <laughs> we took a metal pole, punched a hole through the wall, threw all the cables, which I, in hindsight, should have put them higher. But hey, it's did the job. Because the computer used to be sitting there. Now I got the router sitting there, so I got to mount that. I'm going to mount that to the wall. But I was trying to diagnose uh, GoPro connectivity issues. Because this connects directly to the router. So the closer you have that connection, the more, the, the more better it will be. And when you jump in and out of cars the whole time while you're streaming, any little thing could make it, like, just stutter. And I rely an awful lot on this GoPro. So I wish there was something better. But there's not. There's still not. We're still on the GoPro 8. I tried the 9. The 9's worse. The 9's good for, like, other things. But not for streaming in doors. The sensor is not as good. And that goes into like stupid camera things that I found out after I bought it and then returned it and spent too much time messing around with it. I was sad. Have a good day. You too. It's more gooder that way. <laughs> it's more gooder, more better. Are you still using carpet protector? <laughs> uh, yes, I am still using it. And yeah, I've said a few times, uh, carpet shield's like a 50-50. Like a Sometimes it sticks to door panels, like these ones it did really well with. 
and some soft touch panels especially, it just doesn't grab. It'll grab to like things like the handles and the sides and paint and all that real well, but uh, it doesn't really like certain panels and that's like very, it's very annoying because like there's no, there's no real good solution. What's your advice for somebody who wants to tint their own windows? Just do it. Just do it. Um, if you just want your own car tinted, you're going to have a one hell of a time getting them done. If you're just doing a couple doors and you don't care as much, then you'll have a, you'll have a halfway decent time. But... Uh, if like if you want them to legitimately look like well and not a lot of hassle, just go to a professional. This channel more caters to people that are trying to learn it um, and like use it. It's just it's it's a tough thing to do for just a one-off application. People can do it, but most people don't have that that great of a time. Wait, you're in Michigan? Yes! Look at that. You guys see? You see that title? You see that title working? That's why we did that. Because Tint Stuff doesn't say where you are. Detroit Tint Studio gives a general idea of where you are. Branding, man. Want a charger? Want my charger tinted? Yeah, a charger would be cool. I don't think we've done a charger in here. I've tinted plenty of them. I just don't think I've tinted one in here. That'd be great. Starts at 240 for the sides and the back. And then we tack on lots of fees. Now, if you want, if you want a 240 job, we'll give you a 240 job. It's, it's good. It's just as good as the expensive one. It's just less, less in film. Still good film though. I really, I really undersell the ceramic. <laughs> I like it. I put it on everything that I use and I drive around with it, but all my other films, color stable, lifetime warranty, any issues, I take care of them. It's mainly about heat rejection. There's kind of like, there's a handful of memes floating around where people get a misconception about ceramic and think that it looks like way better and that's what shops will tell them because, you know, it's much more expensive. Right? So it should have a bunch, it should look better and it should do this and it should do that. But really, it's, uh, it's all heat rejection. So I went through and I scraped this window because it had just glue up here and overspray. So we're just gonna like clean it, make sure it's good. And then we'll prep the outside, so. Just wanna go over it so we don't like miss any, anything major that would cause us to have to redo it. I only install a carbon and then a ceramic. I like that model. I think that's where I'm gonna go. I think that's where I'm gonna go down the line. I'm gonna eventually cross off classic because I'd like to just start there at carbon and then ceramic. But I'll definitely give a call. Cool, man. Sounds good. All right, where did I put, where did I put this thing? Oh, I put it here. Good deal. Which side? This side. All right, let's prep this. <laughs> Tape. That's where it is. That's where it is. So we've got. We've got the full windshield to do. It's prepped. It has a fair amount of room, which is nice. 
shouldn't be shouldn't be that bad as long as we don't get any obscure things to find its way in the middle of the tent it should be a pretty straightforward installation yeah like this that's glue A lot of my, a lot of people in my area like it. it. Keeps it simple. I agree. The less options you have, usually three is as many options as you want to have. But what I've been noticing a lot more is I'll have people go with my entry and then add a full windshield. That's been, that's been more common than not. But it's like, it's kind of like all carbon on the sides or dyed on everything, including the windshield. So, it's been, like, windshields have definitely picked up uh, over the past couple of years. It, they brought it up in one of the laws, but they didn't change the law. <laughs> I've been watching it for two hours and didn't say anything. I do that a lot in streams too. And then like, there's a lot of streams too where like, it's kind of like what's the point of commenting because the comments go by so fast. <laughs> so I try and, I don't know. I try and respond to as many of them as I can. It's a good time, it's a good, good time. All right, so we gotta let that dry. See if this works. Cannon. Hey! Good stuff. Let's check this. We're at 3.30. When did we start? Three hours ago, I think. The tape sound sounds like a cartoon character. When it gets slams along the window, it goes down. <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. That talk had better be on YouTube. Okay, cool. Sorry, I gotta check things because I still run a business. Uh, hey guys, pray for me taking my driver's test. <laughs> Good luck, man. I like small streams because you can sort of have a conversation. I agree. It's kind of weird, too. Like, there, there was a streamer I came across not too long ago. He's kind of blown up a little bit more. He's got about a thousand concurrents now. But that, that's, I think, a lot more recent. Um, so good for him. That's definitely why I came across him. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of weird to like be able to talk to somebody on stream and then get a response. But most people stream video games and that's not what I'm, that's not my interest. Do you remove sunroofs when you tint them? No. No, I don't even know how you would remove a sunroof if you want to tint it. They don't, they're, not, they're just not removable. Not without unbolting shit, I'm sure. I've seen some that needed to be replaced and it's just a headache and a half, so. All right, 
Uh, oh wait, no, we still got a little bit. Hmm. Why did I do that? I guess we gotta wait. I gotta look dumb. How many cars today? Oh, I forget, it's this one. Uh, just this. <laughs> this is my whole day. Dropped off early, early, and then we started about 12. Do you like scale model cars? No, it's not really, it's not a hobby of mine. I've seen some videos though. There's been like, I, I don't know, I came across this really interesting section of YouTube for, for like a brief little bit that I remember. They, there were a lot of like smaller cars and the way that they wire them up with, with lights, they put like little fiber uh, electrical wires through them, but they're like super thin. And then they like light them up and make them all functional. That's pretty cool. I like miniature stuff like that, that's cool. Too bad, I, too bad I live in Connecticut. I'd come to you if I lived in Michigan. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, I'd do it on stream. Uh, don't you hate it when a customer comes in the back window switch doesn't go down? <laughs> um, you don't want to get in that position. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely hate it. Having any type of issue when a customer comes around, it would be, would be no good, but... Throw, throw towels over the switches or something to hopefully prevent that. Do you miss tinning from home? I, I definitely do. Um, I don't, I, I still don't really want to shop. There's things that I appreciate about this, and that's like, I'm just an actual tint place now. So when somebody calls and wants to drop their, their stuff off, like I have more than enough space to handle whatever I need to. There's no logistics there. So I'm here, they drop off. Uh, get it done, they pick it back up, or they can wait up front. So either or is perfectly fine. So that's been able for me to take on more work, and I can kind of just like dick around here a little bit more, so like we can do a little bit crazier things that we wouldn't have been able to do from home. But definitely miss just it being there at home, so I don't have to go very far. So it'd be cool to have like a, like a pole barn or something like that's on property and just like a short distance away. Um, that, that would probably be the best case scenario, but, but for the next two years, we're gonna be here. How's this back window or windshield? It's still drying. Damn, I might have to switch the battery again because it's at 40, 43%. We'll probably get through it, but it'd be smarter to just do it while we're here. Have you ever had a customer screw up a tent and then try to bring it back and have them fix it? Have you fix it for free? Mm, yeah, I used to get super pissed. Um, there was like, when that sticks out in my mind, there was a, an old Sable or Taurus, the ones that really suck. And it had these random bubbles streaked up in the bottom. And I was such a stickler about like, they're not supposed to roll the windows down. They're not supposed to roll the windows down. Don't roll the windows down. And then, you know, people, I'd see people drive out of the parking lot and then their windows go down. And I used to get super annoyed about that. And then one day I tinted my front doors and I did the exact same thing in a drive through And I was like, oh, I'm kind of an asshole now. You just forget. So, um, other than that, there's been a couple of accidentals. So like, uh, you, sometimes you'll see nicks on the driver's window and then they'll say, I don't know what happened. Uh, there's just a bunch of holes in my tent. And it's like, yeah, you were knocking stuff against your window. And they're like, no, I wasn't. And they're like, you might not realize it. And this was really funny because they wouldn't realize that they were doing it. When you have rings, when you have keys, your seatbelt in some cars, uh, you'll see it only on the driver's door. And if you point it out to them, they'll notice from then on. So I did this, I redid this guy's Mercedes window. And he was just like, no, it can't possibly be me. I, like, I, I, don't, I don't hit my window or anything. And so the shop uh, was very sympathetic. And they're just like, well, can you just help him out? 
And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'll just do it. And then he went on his way. And then he came back in a month later and was like, you know what? I'm really sorry. You were right. I actually hit it a couple times. So it happens. <laughs> so try and be reasonable with them. I don't really have, I don't have a lot of people that just like freak out. They burned it with their cigarette. Oh, at the top edge. I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. It's just kind of like when you get into a certain price back bracket, and I've noticed the lower you go on pricing, the more headaches you're going to have with, with customers uh, in certain ranges. It's like if you tint cars for 90, like 100 bucks, which is really low, you're, you have a lot more headaches with your customers. They expect the world because they didn't have a lot of money to spend. So generally, that's, that's what I've had to deal with if you ever go that far down. Um, any tips on what you need to start a tint shop? Uh, I got a few small things that I would suggest. Um, start small. Start at home if you can and start to build a client base because if you just jump into like a location, you're going to be spinning your wheels for a little bit. It's, uh, it's a slow start. So you, you have a lot of time to just kind of like build up uh, a customer base, and then when you get big enough, you can kind of move into a bigger location and go from there if that's what you want to do. What's up, Kia? Tinted for a guy, and he immediately pulled a flashlight and started inspecting the tent. Oh, I hate that. I the same thing for the people. They open the doors and then they like get down and like look up at an angle and stuff like that. It's like, how many issues are you looking for? All right, let's change. Kia, you want to see something? GoPro. GoPro. What? Um, Avery Dennison, is that a good film? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I like their NR. I used, uh, I used Avery for a while. We have voice commands, bro. Let's see if it works. Webcam. Oh, GoPro. Dang, I'm fancy now. <laughs> Is it a pain to do your taxes? Uh, not really. Not if you have a tax guy. If you have a tax guy, they make life really easy. They're just like, what's your, like, give me this stuff. And then, and then they, and then you do it, or and then they do it. They do your taxes, and then they tell you what you owe, and then you go, ah, fuck. That's always no fun. I should have let this probably dry for a little bit longer. People can blame you for problems on their car. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, it balloon pop. <laughs> I, you know, I bet you we could probably set up something for the air compressor in case there's a problem. There's actually something we could probably do with that. Cuz the voice commands just work as PC commands with software. Uh, so, you, like, you can, it's got a lot of flexibility, so it's just, like, your own imagination. What do you want to do? Yeah, this is still a little wet, so this is going to be interesting to shrink, but it, it, sh it should be fine. It should be fine. Um, yeah, I've been... There's, there's been some funny ones. So like one that really sticks out was I was in a, a really sketch area outside of Detroit. And uh, it was just, it was like a full SUV that turned into four doors that just was like a headache and a half to get started with. And then 
like I pulled it in from literally the parking lot into the bay and it was like the whole thing. It was like this old Yukon that was just like, it felt like a boat. It was horrible. And it was making all these shitty sounds. And then on those, when you turn the key on, you have to shut the lights off. Um, and then when I did that, the switch is like started to fall into the dashboard. And I, I caught it before it fell and I just put it back. And there's all these like little things, like the whole thing's falling apart. So we tinted it, customer drives onto the road and just does a U-turn straight back into the parking lot, gets out of the car and is just like, what did you do to my car? All these things are wrong. And it's like, oh, what the fuck? Go, go, just, just go. I don't want to fucking deal with you. You're literally get looking for somebody to touch your car so you can try and what? just start a lawsuit like fuck off that is why you guys really should just if there's a few things that I caution you guys to steer away from just just don't price yourself too low because you'll find yourself in situations that that are just like, mm, people with a little bit more money just do, do not pull on the regular. And if you do run that type of business, then you just gotta have like a, have thick skin and stand up for yourself in those situations. Don't fucking cave, cause you'll just, you're in for a world of hurt. But that makes you appear like a dick to the customer, but like, if they're just looking to get, if they're just looking to get one over on you, like, and I think it just comes from, like, they don't have a lot of money to spend, which is why they're really heavily price shopping in the first place, so they're trying to get anything that they possibly can. And so, somebody that has $250 to spend maybe has a little bit more disposable income than somebody with $100 to spend on a tint job. So that's where I think things get max, messed up. Because I see a lot of people like, I only charge this guy a hundred bucks. Why is he being a dick? I'm pretty sure that's why. I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure. People are a trip. Retail is, retail is funny. What does heating under the film do? Oh, ignore it. It's nothing special. The film is a little bit wet. So the dryer sheet, dry shrink prep. Yeah, we used dry shrink prep. I didn't let it dry all the way. So I lifted it up and literally just dried, tried to dry it out before shrinking it. So nothing special. No magical tricks right now. Just. See that little guy? That's why we tried to dry it out. <gasps> oh, that was close. Because when you get into... <laughs> customer tint my car. Also, customer, why did you tint my car? Um, when you get like into these little... If you have little damp areas right at the bottom you're trying to get a bunch of film to shrink down and if it just grabs in a spot, so if, it, if it's like wet here and dry here, all this will shrink down and then this, this part will grab and then you'll just crease it really fast. So just try and make it nice and dry. 
Um, somebody trying to shop around for cheaper than 60? Bro, there is no bottom. They'll just keep going until they get you to pay them money for you for them to like come to your shop. So that's like, that's kind of where I where I go with with talks about films like uh, like budget films. It's the wrong way to like look at your business. You don't want to like you got like some of you guys. I love you, but like look at it this way: somebody is trying to get the cheapest tint job, and you guys are are some of you guys are shopping around for the cheapest tint. Those things are basically identical scenarios. Like, you, you're looking for the best film for no money. And then expect people to, like, you're not going to expect your customers to pay more money either. And then you just get in this perpetual cycle of struggling tint shop. Work on, work on things that make you into a better business and a better company, better customer service. Those things, they all cost money. So that's why you gotta offer a little bit better product and charge accordingly for your services and just try and be better. Because there's a lot of shit places. So it's not that hard to stand out. Sixty dollars. I'd hate to see what the car's worth. <laughs> you never know. Maybe he talked a dealership into giving him a Mercedes. Did it? Is that still there? Oh, it is. My knife fell out of my pocket and I forgot to put it back, but I saw where it was. But it comes with everything, right? I mean, I price shop a lot of things that I don't care about as much. So it's like, what do you, what do you really value? Yeah. <laughs> I bet I could almost tell you where that film came from. I tinted, I bought two rolls for 120 bucks from a local shop and it didn't even last a month. Yeah, I've bought, uh, the cheapest that I found film was one mil film out of China, landed for $60. And I put that under a lamp and got it to fail within like a few weeks. It was crazy. It's, it's work, it's not like you just stamp your fingers and it's done. Yeah, 100%. The, the tricky part though is you have to, you have to make that easily understandable for a consumer. And a really good way to do that is with video. So if you start making videos that promote your business with some behind the scenes type, type videos, like showing the process, talking about why you do what you do and what goes into a good job and start, you know, just making general content that compares, you know, you could even go as far as different films, why you wouldn't go with one option over another or why you offer certain things. Stuff like that actually speaks a lot. I had a guy... Um, I'll never, like, this was super helpful. So if people call and schedule with me, um, it's, it's kind of a tough sell over the phone, but if I give them some information, if I, like, book them, even if I book them for, like, my least expensive film, and then direct them towards, like, things like my Facebook page, um, and social media, where I have you know, some content out there about why I have the things that I have, like the carbon, the cheap versus the expensive, and a lot of live streams that go very deep into the full process of the car, right? 
then they become like people appreciate that even if not everybody's going to upsell. So it's something that they can sit around with because there's time in between when they schedule and when they come in for their appointment. So when, when, they, when they actually book with you, it's like they're committed at that point, right? So they might actually just have some more free time to then look into your business because they call, they schedule an appointment. Oh, where am I going? Let me find out a little bit more about them. That's not always the case, but I remember I had this guy with a, a convertible Mustang we did on stream. And he was just like, oh, it's a convertible. I don't, I don't need anything better. I just want tint. And I was like, okay, cool. And then an hour and a half after I scheduled him, he was asking about carbon. All I did was bring up the fact that I had it as an option, but I didn't, I didn't pressure beyond that. So those are, like, those are some little things that can really help, uh, help sales and just better explain what you do as a company because there's reasons other than you want more money for why you carry better films. They exist. You care about what you do and you want to show that. So what everybody is doing is taking pictures and posting them. What very few people do is put together any type of video or content and promote it outside of a you the few the few rolls that I bought have a purplish color <laughs> that would be a red flag unless it wasn't like that and it faded Nice. For most, for most sales, I try to make known the three films that we have. Yeah, and it can be as simple as that sometimes. Just casually mentioning that you have something better than your standard. Uh, oh, we don't have to do that. Because what a lot of people will do are lazy sales. So a customer will call up, hey, how much is it to get tent? Okay, what do you have? And then, you know. I've got a brand new, a brand new car, and they're like, oh, "Okay, cool. Uh, it costs this much." Okay, thank you. Bye. And that's it. Like the 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 business, the business didn't do a damn thing. To, like, didn't didn't do anything other than price. And that's <laughs> I've heard way too many shops just quote a price because they're too busy, doing everything else. They don't take time to even try and have a conversation. And it's hard. I'm still trying to figure that part out too, but I have seen like, at least try and be, <laughs> try and be nice, try and be upbeat. And then uh, at least bring up the fact that you have something other than tint. Cause it might start getting them interested in something other than just whatever the cheapest tint is out there. Because there's a lot of people that just, they're just looking for tint. They haven't looked into anything beyond that. You know, they're, they're people, they got their own lives. Not everybody thoroughly researches things that they buy. I think most people don't. I'm the opposite. <laughs> I research tech shit to death. All right, where's my clay bar? That's what the last piece. Oh, it's right here. We can take that. Kobe. Have you ever used Lumar? Uh, yeah, when I first started. It was a very easy shrinking film. I hear... I hear not so great things about Lumar because there's a lot of oversaturation of Lumar and 
people aren't charging accordingly for the film, which is kind of scary. So those are like, they've got a decently good name for themselves. They're just, uh, there's a lot of shops and tightly knit in certain areas that all carry Lumar. So then it gets tough to like differentiate yourself. Mentioning heat lamps. Oh yeah, heat lamps is great. That's, that's that connection. So you can stand there and talk to them about a particular film for hours, or you can just like, here, this is what it's actually gonna do for you. Are you interested? Um, and then mentioning it ahead of time is good too, because it's kind of like, it kind of preps um, that, you know, it's not just like sprung on them randomly. It's like they come in, yeah, there's different films. Oh, he mentioned a heat lamp demonstration so he could illustrate it in person. That's the easiest way to, to you know, make that connection and just like, are you interested in this? Are you not? I'm just trying to find out what's best for you. I need to up my computer in using Socket 775. It's slow on Windows 10. <laughs> Was there like a something before that? I need to, I need to use my... I just changed out my computer. I don't know if there was a different comment. I must have missed something. I, I always have like an ear for, uh, for, for tech comments. So it's something I care about a lot. <laughs> Does Lexan have a blue hue to it? It was very non-colorful. It was actually very, very like just The the carbon, look at the carbon video. That was Lexan versus uh, GeoShield carbon. So you could see definitely a color difference between the two. Do you really need that much space? Yes, of course, duh. Don't you see? I have so much things filling up the, no, I don't. But it was all that was available. <laughs> GoPro, GoPro. Yeah, so that was a, like, when I moved in here, I, I didn't want to move into, I didn't want to move into a 3,000 square foot, uh, square foot building. I was looking for, like, a thousand to, like, honestly, like, a thousand square feet was what I was looking for. But they just, finding a space with a garage door that was nearby where I live was very, very, like, it just didn't exist. Oh, the clay bar. That's what I was going to get. What are your thoughts on the gasket speed loader? Uh, I don't see the difference between that and the, the gasket wizards that's been around forever. I appreciate what he's doing, though. I talked to you before about AMD. I like Intel. Oh, okay. It was just a general PC conversation yeah um i like i like whatever works so i went with a thread ripper pc because amd came out with thread ripper and was making some waves again and i got a good deal on a, a 1950x so that's why i went with that and being that i was heavily doing video editing and then streaming Something with more cores made all the sense in the world. The other computer that I had was a four-core Intel machine. That thing was a beast, too. But at the time, I was mostly using that for, like, some light video editing and more, like, gaming. But Threadripper didn't exist when I made that computer. But any computer that I'm, like, I like things to have, like, a, a real-world purpose. <sighs> so. Being that I got to make a computer for video editing, and then that was part of the channel, and now streaming. It's good fun. My nieces tell me I need to 
get into YouTube or start doing YouTube? It's, it depends on what your goals are. Because there's these waves. And, like, everybody and their dog wants to be a YouTuber. Ask any kid. It's the most desirable. <laughs> oh, that freaks me out. There's uh, the hazards right there. Uh, what was it? Webcam. Webcam. You guys see that? I bumped the button and I heard clicking right as I was cleaning out the windshield. GoPro. <laughs> when will I start teaching my kid to be a tenor? Oh, that's... Nah. If he wants to learn, what, I, what I'd what i expect is when they're real young, they show interest. When they get a little older, and eh, that's what my dad does. I want to do something different. I don't, I don't expect my kid to be a tenor. Um, but like I was saying with YouTube, like it, it depends on what your goals are. So if you like, you just want to be a YouTuber that makes money, like that's just, that fucking boat is real hard to jump onto unless you're good. And people are, are catching up faster. So there's a lot of people talking about TikTok. I'd honestly say don't jump on the whole TikTok train. It's very, in terms of actual advertisers and stuff, it's very low impact. YouTube is more meaningful. Streaming is, is pretty decent too. But it's, it, like I said, it depends on what your goals are. So for like window tinning, right? Use it as a way to promote your window tinning business. You, a lot of people will look at already existing successful channels and try and duplicate what they're doing. What you really have to do, and this is like next to impossible, but it's the way that everything kind of works. You got to find something that doesn't really exist and do that thing. And it, it'll go unnoticed for a long time. So that's kind of what my goals are with streaming. Um, streaming has picked up in popularity, and I started to notice this last year, in Oct like a little bit before October. And then companies started making big moves. So like Ninja got picked up on Mixer, Shroud got picked up on Mixer, uh, Courage and Valkyrie got picked up on YouTube. Big companies, like Facebook too, also picked up streamers. And now streaming is like the hot topic that everybody's jumping on board with. But what everybody is sleeping on is creative things that are done with live streaming. They just don't exist. It's mostly all gaming. Everybody wants to be a game streamer. That train, that train has largely sailed. There's the people that exist that do it well. You might you might be able to get into a particular niche with a new game, but you often get locked into a category, so you'll be stuck with whatever that game is. <laughs> so you better really like it. Um, but something that, something that, that you gotta remember is there's a lot of kids growing up watching streamers those kids have to get jobs eventually. And guess, guess who's going to teach them how to tent? <laughs> and like, you could do it with a number of things. It doesn't actually have to be a job. But like, just creative streams, they just, they don't exist. Like, I came across uh, this dude on Twitch the other day. He, he just moved into an 8,000 square foot warehouse. And what does he do? He messes around with tech. He like hooks up different cameras 
messes around with drones. Like he's all just about making a better stream and doing effects with the stream. <laughs> That's very different from what anybody else is doing. But there's like, you know, as long as you can try and make something halfway interesting, um, that's that's different. That's that's kind of what you want to shoot for. It's how I started my YouTube channel. I tinted. Nobody made tinting videos. I made tinting videos. I didn't really realize what I was doing at the time, though. Now I understand it a little bit more. So. People are making tinting videos. I'm streaming. Streaming, in my opinion, is a better way to learn. Oh well, a better a better type of, of learning for particular things. It's very accessible. So if you have a question, like that thing that you always wanted to know, and like if you're learning, you're gonna be watching. All right. So we have this pretty much prepped for the roll. We squeegeed this window off, right? We did that, right? We cleaned this? Should we do it again? Maybe one more time? Well, that's... Did we give it? Yeah, we did. We definitely did. I just forget. I got in a ramble. All the YouTube and Twitch and all that stuff... That's my side hobby right now. I, I listened to... You cleaned it twice? Oh. <laughs> I thought so. I got distracted. One more time, just to be sure. It's not bad to do it right before you go to install it. I could talk about YouTube and Twitch strategy analytics and stuff like that. <laughs> Way too much. All right, but people are here to learn tinting, so that's what we're going to do. I wish that rolled a little bit tighter. Your live stream is the best. I've learned 90% of what I do from it. That, you see, it just doesn't exist. Thank you. Like, there's videos breaking down every little topic, but one of my favorite videos that I actually made was like showing how to tuck film on multiple cars. Because it's like, every one of them is going to be a little bit different. They're all the same, mostly the same, but they're not, they're not the same. Is the audio not synced? Oh, it might be a little off. That's a technical challenge. So the GoPro streams to the PC, but it streams at an inconsistent uh, delay, so sometimes it's like 800 milliseconds, and sometimes it's like 1200 milliseconds. So I don't know until I see it after the fact. I have to figure out a good way to kind of like monitor it, but now we're, we're switching between cameras, so there's always something to learn with every car. 100%. And one thing that I, I never forget is like when I was first learning, I didn't care what anybody was tinting. I just watched them tint. And I still do. Like if, if, you, if you're at somebody's shop, you're always curious how they tint, right? So my thought with this stream is like, oh, it's, guys, you guys, I'll try, I'll try and explain how reassuring this was for me. So when you make, when, like, I, I'm trying to make a, a halfway successful YouTube channel. And with video, the chances of that video 
going bigger are much greater. But what you gotta keep in mind with video is like video is chasing. You're constantly chasing views. And there's no meaningful connection with your audience. And I learned this more as I started streaming, but I was like, if I do a live stream and I'm there hanging out with people, we can have a conversation and it's like real time, real time learning. So there's a lot of things that you wouldn't see in a video that I'll edit out for the sake of it being a video. But if you actually are serious about learning tint, you're 100% gonna watch long form video. Because you're just trying to learn anything that you can. So these might get boring, but they're for the people that really wanna learn or hang out and see something interesting. At least that I think is halfway interesting. So it's got its place. And what's like re reassuring for me is that I could do this for a handful of years easily and not feel stressed out about chasing like a trend and trying to like, oh, my channel underperformed last month, I'm stressed. Have you ever worked with a film called Omnique? Yeah, and I'm kind of jealous. I, you know, maybe I'll put out that film. Because here's, <laughs> let me, let me, I'll, I'm, I can't say for sure, but there's only a handful of manufacturers. So what most likely is that they're doing is they're most likely importing that shit. Oh no. Oh no, I sat on my clay bar. It's stuck to my pants. <laughs> That's never happened. Why is it stuck to my pants more than it's stuck to anything else? That sucks. I just got new jeans too. I guess those are ripped new jeans. Okay, as I was saying, there's Ugh. there's only so many manufacturers and colorful mirrored Colored mirror film is a total Chinese type of thing. Because they make they make everything. You can you can buy that crazy mirror shit out of China. So it's probably just imported and resold. There won't be any contaminants on your pant pocket. Hundred <laughs> percent. So it's most likely um, some random Chinese manufacturer or supplier. I will say it was impressive under a heat lamp though. So there's, they're, they're not lying about the heat reduction. It's good, it's just, it's reflective. So that's why it'll be a lot better at heat rejection. Um, but to answer your question, yes, I have actually installed two of their films. And they were half, they're, they're decent to work with. Uh, we did a look on the channel. Um, we did an Audi in gold mirror tint. And it, it went fine. It's definitely like a little bit more prone to like showing imperfections and stuff. But um, as far as like just using it for the first time, yeah, it was fine. It's not something that you can really legally ever drive around with pretty much anywhere. So that's why like most places aren't gonna do it. But yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. I'm, I'm a little jealous because uh, I'm thinking, like if I were to rebrand any type of film, because that's what a lot of companies do, is they'll source a window film and they'll rebrand it. I don't wanna rebrand any film like that, or I don't wanna film rebrand any type of like regular film that you could get because there's so many of them and what the fuck else am I gonna do that's different? But I don't know, rebranding some crazy shit, that would be more fun for me. You could probably do something like that. Squeegee, where did I put you? 
There. I put you there. Yeah. I have trouble shrinking it. Yeah, that was, that was it. Um, it really didn't shrink bad compared to a lot of other films. A little bit slower, but if you haven't played with any other films, yeah, like it's, it's going to be difficult because you're not used to shrinking. But compared to a lot of other films, it was fine. Dang, this went pretty well, I think. Let me wipe this off, and then we'll check it over. But that was smooth. That's what I like to see. What is that? <gasps> oh, this water on the outside. Oh, thank God. Oh, thank God. I was like, no, that's a hair. Or that's something. A little bit, little bit of moisture around this dot matrix. I noticed it distorted the color but didn't crease when I shrunk it. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I wouldn't necessarily think of that before it happens, but it's a very creative color. So like with window tint, like that's something uh, they have to take into account when they manufacture it, like a, a legitimate film. So you're, you're taking a surface area that's this wide and you're making it smaller, right? Well, you're compressing everything together, glue, dye, polyester, so it's not surprising, but I got distorted color and they refused to replace it. <laughs> well, eh. <laughs> rebranded Chinese, it's not, not super expensive, <laughs> like, all that comes with the, with the territory. <laughs> they came for a brow and they ended up getting a full ceramic just from talking about it. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, like, that's, I mean, as an online re retailer, like, these are the things that you find out the more you get into the industry. The, when you spend... Um, like companies want your money and they don't want to give it back. Of course not, because then they're not in business anymore. So when you spend $50 on film, like, like the window films, this, this kind of silly thing where it takes a fair amount of experience to be able to install properly. So a lot of things they could just brush off and say, oh, you don't know what you're doing. And they might not be wrong. So sometimes with certain films, there's, uh, not with most films, but like a particular film like 3M Crystalline, right? That takes an actual legitimate different shrinking technique than your average film and what you're gonna see on this channel. So keep that in mind. Um, there's, just, there's just sometimes those things. Uh, kind of like with uh, other budget companies, like, you're just, there's no money for good customer service. They're an online retailer, they sell you film, and then you get it, cool, and then they're done with you. Like, that's it. A brand like Geo, that's a legitimate film company that's going to take care of their clients because they want repeat business. They're not just a, a retail-facing online web store. So, just something to think about. All of this is good. I think I have a little... That's good. I think there's a little piece of glue I missed on those dots. So we can probably salvage it just fine. 
We just have to be clean about it. Everything else looks great, though. Very, very happy. Glad whatever issue is here is under the dots. Because they're going to turn silver anyways. So... Where are you? It's right here, right at the top. So we gotta just be very careful. We gotta peel this back just a little bit. Look where it is. Aha! Uh -huh. I got you. Yep, just a little piece. Coming right off. Good deal. It's actually a slim piece right here, too. Let's get you out of there, too. Must have been when we cleaned it off. Good. Good. All right. We should cover this up. Because we're going to have to spray a little bit more than I'd like. So what do we do? Over here. <laughs> hey, I finally made it to the stream. And we're going to be ending soon, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for commenting, liking, and subscribing. Good deal. Much better. That's smooth now. It's not something that you would have, like... It's not something you would have seen from the outside, but you, what you would have seen is, like, a little bump here. So what we did is we just got rid of that. So there was, like I said, there was glue that we cleaned off there, but what ha probably happened was there was just something else that was up there. Oh, you bitch. Oh, you bitch. Hang on. I'm speaking too soon. I saw the one thing that's in the driver's line of sight that we got to take care of. Real small. Real small. Oh, don't go missing. It's always scary when you peel it back and spray it down. And then you think that you missed it. And you cross your fingers that you actually got it instead. Sorry, we're doing sketch work here. Not sketch work, but like... What am I trying to say? Scary? Nerve-wracking? Cross your fingers and pray to the tint gods? Tint surgery, that's what we're doing. We're doing tint surgery. Oh, good. Good, good. Good, good. All right. Is that another one? Yeah, there's a little guy right there. All right. We successfully did that one. So there's just one more little guy right there. Or we moved them. Sometimes. Yeah, we got it. I felt it. That's what you want to do. You want to feel it like loosen up. It happens where you can get like a speck, one of those like little, there's usually going to be like something small that you find, but when it starts to get into like the size of a grain of sand, that's where it's, it's basically like a small boulder in terms of window tinting. And you can like, a lot of times, if you can get to them clean, you can feel them. And if you can feel it, uh, you can like usually just brush it out very softly. So you just spray it down, brush it out, it falls out of the glue, it wasn't pressed in, and then everything dries out and looks, looks fantastic. But that's, it's very scary and you can, 
Like, if that was all the way over here, it would be really nerve-wracking to do. Oh, thank God. I keep... I keep thinking that, like, I thought I saw a hair there, but it was just a little water smear. Every time you do that, my anxiety goes to the roof. <laughs> yeah, same here, man. It's like, it still happens with windshields. I don't know what it is. I, I clean them as best as I can, and there's still, like, that one thing that gets in, like, the driver's line of sight. But... We've overall been really, really good with windshields. We've stepped up our game a lot. Water messes with me. Oh, 100%. There's those, like... The real tough ones are those slight dis distortions. What's a good... Oh, what's a good tint to... What's a good kit to tint your windows with? Uh, check out Tint Zoom. They actually have GeoShield kits. They just updated their site too. It used to look really archaic and confusing, but now they're good. They so they actually source If you like if you're going to go the kit route, they offer good like legitimately good films, the same type of stuff that I install here. Um, and they, they have, they're, they're an actual shop and they use four different softwares, I think. They have like basically all, like they install kits regularly and they have more than one software. So, I, like I always say, I'm not a big fan of plotters and there's pros and cons with each software and a lot of times you'll find some patterns work better on different softwares. So they actually are forced to take the time to figure out which ones are, are good and which ones aren't. So that, that would be like the one place. Everybody else is, well, I'm assuming a lot of other places are just going to be like 30 bucks, mysterious eBay film. Or if you have a brand of film, they're going to have one software because why would you have more than one software? So... Yeah, good times. <laughs> this is looking good. I'm very happy with this. Everything's laying down. Everything's looking looking good. I think we're pretty much done at this point. We just got to pop the mirror back on. Yeah, tint tint zoom for all you tint zoomers. <laughs> all right, so this like this clip here, this comes down. Well, the cover comes down and it just like slots over. And then there's this little pressure clip right here that you just pull back and it'll pop right back off. So you just, if you didn't know, you just pop it right back on. There we go. That's popped right back on. Or else we'd have to create a really ugly splice in the tent. Um, if you had a longer tool, you could just like pull that down without even popping the plastic, but. <sighs> hey, how often do you swap through squeegees? Not very often. They usually last a couple months. Wha-bam! That doesn't get old. It's been one stream and it doesn't get old. God damn, I get like gum on my pants. <laughs> oh, bummer. Yeah, so I don't swap through squeegees very often. Um, usually when I start seeing a scratch in, in film, that's when I'll swap them out. Or if they start leaving too many streaks behind, I'll swap them. If your customer comes back with bubbled windows, how do you handle the warranty? Who compensates you? We use Lumar, but we never fill out the Lumar warranty cards. Well, that was a big mistake because Lumar pays very well for their warranties. They're one of the few companies that do. Lumar will actually compensate you for the film and the labor. So if you charge like 300 plus dollars to like redo that car, they'll pay you that. Um, 
And uh, yeah, you have to fill out the card. So unfortunately, if you don't follow the warranty system, they don't know that it's their film. So talk to Lumar and see. But if you're too lazy about doing your warranty cards, then that, that shit's on you. Because that shit's supposed to be by the film company. Sucks. Sucks, man. <laughs> oh, dang! Oh! Oh, it's so loud! Oh, they got me! Oh, shit! <laughs> the pop on the... Mike D? Mike D? Is it gonna... I'm scared. I'm genuinely scared right now. It's not, oh, is it, is it, is it broken? Oh God, Mike, Mike D with a 10. Here's a tip for the professor. Thank you. Thanks buddy, I, I really appreciate it. Oh, it stopped. <laughs> Oops, I broke it. <laughs> no, I think it followed what it's supposed to do. I'll have to check, but I'm pretty sure it was supposed to run for like 20 seconds or something. I just like, dang. Thank you so much for the 10. I appreciate that a lot. I think that's our only super chat of the stream. That is our only super chat. Thank you for supporting the stream. Oh, I still have a Gatorade. Oh, I have water. I have water here. Hell yeah. I go way too long without drinking water through the day. I get stuck on coffee and I forget about water. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, oh shit, I should have had water. But I treat my coffee like water and that's a bad deal. Oh shit, I missed a call. Uh, stupid carrier. Okay, I gotta figure out those issues. I'm sorry guys. My phone is disconnected from my carrier this morning, literally on the way on the way into work, I, like, I noticed it this morning. It dropped off the Wi-Fi, and then it didn't reconnect to the carrier, which it shouldn't have dropped off anyways. But it, it just didn't work uh, for a minute, and then it connected. And then I left again, and now it's being dumb. But we are at the end of the stream. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure the next one is probably going to be on Saturday. I don't think I have a confirmed appointment yet, but I'm assuming something's gonna pop up for Saturday. So keep the bell on for that. Um, big shout out to Super Chat for Mike D with the 10. Much appreciated. Almost scared the shit out of me. We'll pop that later. <laughs> so, same here. I drink more water and less coffee. Yeah, or I need to drink more water and less coffee good for you. It's, it's especially difficult when it gets cold. Because coffee is just warm and nice. So how about GeoShield? Do you give warranty cards out? Uh, for the ceramics usually, yes. But I, they, there's a registration in all that form too. But the one thing I will say as a point against Geo is I need a different pen because they made these like a glossy cardboard, so they look really nice, but if you take a regular pen, it's very difficult to write on these things. But you can register on their website, so. But I'm good friends with GeoShield. That's the thing. If you're good friends with the company or whatever, like call them up, call Lumar, check with them. Um, if you've been like a good client of theirs, then they'll, they'll take care of you. If you've been like a good long-term client. But if you're just kind of like, 
new, use them periodically or whatever. Sometimes that's that's a lot harder uh, to get something like that honored. So it just depends on your standing. Sometimes companies will, will shine through, so, but yeah. Play by the rules. How much are the rows from Geo? Uh, contact them. I can't give out pricing on everything, but they're pretty in line with a lot of other people as far as it, so. I did say about the, the Geo. If you're looking to switch, just talk to them. They're good people over there. And like I say, pricing, they're like, they fall in line with everything, so it's not gonna like, it's not gonna be a, a, a giant price hike or anything for you to switch. It's just different company, good film. So, alrighty, with that, uh, I will hopefully see you guys on Saturday. Cross your fingers. This has been a long stream. Thank you again so much for the super chat. Also, anybody that was hanging out, I appreciate you being here. And as always, I will see you in the next one. Webcam. Webcam. Oh, look at that. It looks cool. <laughs> yes, talk to Cubby Wolf. Cubby Wolf or Burns. Both of them great people. See you guys. Bye-bye. I got to fix my end screen.